All right, I think we're looking good here. All right. uh, good afternoon and welcome to the August meeting of the Knox County Commission. Thank you for joining us today if you're watching uh, via Zoom. Uh, before we begin tonight's meeting, I'm going to um, ask the County Clerk's Office to call roll. Commissioner Gill. Present. Okay. Commissioner present. Carringer. Present. Oh, present. Commissioner Smith. Here. Commissioner Nystrom. Here. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Here. Commissioner Anders. Here. Commissioner Bussler. Here. Commissioner Baylor. Commissioner Daly. Here. Commissioner Jay. Here. Commissioner Biggs. We have nine members present. I think Commissioner Biggs said he might be uh, uh, joining us in three minutes. So, all right, next item on the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Jay, would you please uh, lead us in the devotional for this evening? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am uh, very happy to welcome my friend, Mr. Daryl, Pastor Daryl Arnold, who is going to lead us today and I welcome him to take the video. Well, thank you so much uh, to the entire commission, also especially to the chair and also to my friend Jay. Very grateful for the opportunity. I wanna uh, apologize for not generally being in a, I'm generally in a blue suit and a bow tie, but today I'm with my sons and we're actually in the woods fishing. And so uh, this morning I told him I spent time with them fishing. And when he called, I said, I'll just do both at the same time. The first thing I told them to do was to spray, to spray some bug spray on them to make sure that they were protected when they came out. And then we got to fishing and didn't catch anything for hours and they were ready to go. And I'm trying to teach them the importance of just sticking with it and being patient. And then in about 20, 20 minutes before I was about to, cut, to call in, man, them small mouth just start biting. And I just really felt like that's what the Lord wanted to talk to me, to you all about, is that I, I think that we need to make sure that we're protecting ourselves. I think we need to be ensure that our leadership is difficult and sometimes we gotta be patient. And if we'll continue to be persistent and keep casting, uh, we'll eventually catch what we're looking for. And so those are the three things that I wanna pray over your lives and over the, those that will be watching via Zoom is that they will be protected, that they will be patient and that they that they would persevere. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to serve in devotion today. I thank you for every person that is on this Zoom call for this whole entire commission and how diligently they serve our community. I pray, Lord, first of all, that you would protect them. Lord, not just with, with bug spray and bug repellent, Lord, but that you would protect them with your angels. Lord, this is a difficult time. People are dying every single day of a disease that we didn't know anything about six months ago. And so, Father, I ask that your angels be assigned to each and every one of them, their community, their districts, but more than anything, their family members. Secondly, Lord, I pray, God, that you would give them patience. It is very difficult to be a leader right now, whether it be in government, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in our own homes, it's difficult to be a leader. And so I pray that you would give us patience, patience to trust you and to know that although we're trying to figure it out, you, got, you already have it worked it out. And then lastly, Lord, I pray for perseverance, that we would not be weary in well-doing, that we just keep on casting because we know that the answers is in the water. We know that you're eventually going to provide answers for the salute, for the questions that we have and, and solutions for the problems that we're dealing with. Bless this meeting. We decree and declare that the blessing of the Lord rest upon each and every person in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us and uh, good words and uh, good luck as you continue to catch. I'm, I'm sorry, my son, if he had been watching this, he would have loved that. He would ask what you guys were using as bait. So <laughs> Can't tell all the secrets, brother. Can't tell all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you, joining us. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Uh, Commissioner Carringer, would you please uh, lead us in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to our nation's flag? Absolutely. I want to acknowledge that I see Commissioner Beeler just popped in there. Good to see you, brother. Uh, would everybody stand please? And I have the flag behind me and 
We do a salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United the States, States of America, America and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Carringer. Uh, moving on to the agenda. Uh, before we jump into public forum, I would like to, uh, as we do at many of these meetings when we've got honorary resolutions, I would like to go ahead and uh, frankly, we, we've got one special person from outside our commission and then we've got uh, some honorary resolutions for our county commissioners that are going to be, uh, this is gonna be their last meeting, I'm one of them. Uh, so uh, Madam Clerk, what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and begin the uh, honorary resolutions. I also know that uh, Mr. Uh, Stevenson, who is, he's, he is watching the meeting from home. So he's not zoomed in, but I know that uh, Mr. Bear Stevenson and Shirley are watching the meeting tonight. So uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the first uh, honorary resolution, please? You, Randy's got questions. Sure, okay, thank you. Thank you for watching that. Yes, uh, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to defer the commission and, and law director's resolution. I, I would prefer to honor you guys in a way that you're all deserving of when we can actually have, have a meeting where you can come with your family and we can do our due respects for you guys if, if you guys wish it to be that way. Well, I know I would, because I had a granddaughter who was very excited to be able to come up and see everybody today. I'll second that. Okay, hey, uh, Commissioner Gill, you have any take on that? I'm not sure, Commissioner Gill, you may be on mute. I don't have a preference. Okay. Uh, I kind of fall into the uh, don't have a preference category just because you know we can easily come back to uh, to be recognized if, if it suits the body. Uh, I mean, it would, would one option be to uh, go ahead and, and pass the resolutions tonight and then bring the uh, body back for in the future date for a uh, recognition ceremony where it can be done in, in person? That could be kind of where you have have, have the best to have, have both worlds take care of. I mean, you never can tell. It might be a long time before we can you know, where it works, or it could be a month. Uh, but it, it seems, in my opinion, I'd, I'd, I'd like to maybe at least get it done. And then we can invite everybody back for the, you've got to actually give people these certificates. And we could, everybody could come back when we meet in person after they've been passed. And I think it'd be kind of neat for the commissioners who are on this body to actually vote on and, and pass the resolutions that they're uh, being honored with. At least that's my, my two cents worth. Uh, is that, a, is that a good compromise, Mr. Smith, or what? Uh, what do you What do y'all think? Uh, Michelle, I'm, willing, I'm willing to do whatever this body wants to do, especially what you four are willing to do or wanting to do. I just wanted to make sure that you all get the uh, recognition, ceremony, and respect that you deserve for the service you all provided to this community. Uh, Commissioner Carringer, uh, if, would you be opposed if we passed them tonight, then everybody came back where they might be read again for a more formal meeting in the future? No, I don't have a problem. I just had a granddaughter who was looking forward to being there tonight, seeing all of you all, and then I had to disappoint her Saturday. So um, I know she she loves all of you all and would love to be able to see you all again. So, uh, but, I, but I'm, I'm fine, whatever everybody wants to do and whatever makes it easiest. Well, let's do this. Uh, it'd be my preference to go ahead and, and pass them tonight and then work the, whoever the ne next chair of the commission is and the next commission body, you know, work and as soon as the next in-person meeting is, and it could be at the, as soon as the end of September, uh, could bring everybody back to formally actually give and present these certificates uh, to the commission. That might be uh, a way to kind of have our cake and eat it too, um, if that's okay with everyone. That, is that okay with, uh, yeah, Brad, you're awfully quiet on this. Where are you at, Brad? Uh, I have no preference. We can we can do what, we can approve them and get them out of the way and then come back. I, I would like to come back though. I think it'd be- Well, me too. A memorable moment. Yeah, I could be clear. My wife was actually gonna come to a commission meeting, which usually she's downstairs working and, and watching it on TV. So uh, 
yeah, that well, well let's if it pleases the body, we'll go ahead and go ahead and get these done. And then whoever the uh, next commission is and to our peers who are still on the body, if y'all could work with uh, whoever you select as chair to bring us all back in uh, September or October. And you know, there, there could be times where our schedules, it might be hard to get all four of us back. So you know, it could be where you do it one at a time, depending on how, you know how it is. So, uh, uh, so with all that said, it'd be nice just to get these done. So y'all don't have to worry about trying to fit them into a future agenda and event that some of us may hopefully someday be traveling again soon and might have a conflict with the night where everybody else could be here. So, all right, so with that said, uh, you mean to say, Chairman, that you're going to have something else to do on the fourth Monday of every month? Come on now. Uh, actually, I usually have Boy Scout meetings on that day, on Monday nights. So yeah, I'll be going back to Boy Scout meetings, to be uh, quite honest. So uh, and hopefully we can work this for a uh, comeback. So uh, so that said, Madam Clerk, would you go ahead and uh, begin? I believe the first one is uh, Commissioner uh, Gills, if you could read that one, and then we'll have a motion for approval. This is resolution R-20-8-101. It's a resolution honoring Commissioner Ellen Gill for her service on the Knox County Commission. Motion to approve. Second. Second, obviously. <laughs> okay, uh, all in favor of this uh, resolution, please say aye. 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 I, I will not even do the nays, so. Um, Dave. Do we not have to do roll call? Uh, actually, we do have to do roll call. Thanks, uh, Mr. Smith, for uh, uh, Mr. Law Director. Would it be possible when we do a, a vote? Well, let's just do a quick roll call on these. So, yeah. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Gill. Aye. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. 10 votes. All right, it passes. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. The next item is resolution R-20-8-102. It's a resolution honoring Commissioner Michelle Carringer for her service on the Knox County Commission. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a proper motion uh, by Commissioner Beeler with a second by Commissioner Schoonmaker. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call roll. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. 10 members voting aye. Thank you, it passes. Uh, Madam Clerk, next item. The next item is resolution R-20-8-103. It's a resolution honoring Commissioner Hugh Nystrom for his service on the Knox County Commission. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion for approval by Commissioner Anders with a second by Commissioner Smith. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. All members present voting aye. aye. Thank you. It passes. Madam Clerk, next item. Resolution R-20-8-104. It's a resolution honoring Commissioner Brad Anders for his service on the Knox County Commission. 
Motion to approve. Second. Motion for approval by Commissioner Smith with a second by Commissioner Carringer. Uh, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Jay votes aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill. Aye. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. If I vote no, does that mean he has to stay? <laughs> yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. All members present voting aye. Okay, it passes. Uh, Wow, we've uh, we've just passed uh, honorary resolutions honoring uh, all of our uh, outgoing commissioners, and also want to thank and recognize some folks who aren't on those resolutions. And uh, I want to thank Mike. I want to thank Michael. I want to thank Jennifer, and I want to thank Angela. Uh, this type of uh, public service that we've all signed up for it not only is it time, but it's. Uh, it's a lot of mental stress too. And there's a lot of times when you might be at home and you've got something on your mind and your significant other is, is, is there to help you and uh, help be there on the home front while you're out serving the community and also be there when, when you might be stressed out and they're, 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 they're making our lives a lot easier. You know, speaking for my own wife, Angela, she uh, makes me a much better man and I uh, couldn't have done this without her. So I, I guess, I'll ask for a round of applause uh, from my fellow commissioners. You know, maybe you can turn your mics on because we all know that none of us would be serving were it not for those uh, other special players at home that, uh, that make it possible. So thank you. Uh, case in point, I know Angela's out running trace to a scout meeting, I think tonight. So I also wanna thank you know, our, our longest serving commissioners, Commissioner Anders, probably longest serving in the history of Knox County. Uh, not only has he, uh, I guess, pre post-term limits, <laughs> all stuff, but, uh, you know, uh, Commissioner, you, you've been chairman, you've done a lot of hard work, and I know out of my discretionary funds, I just kind of wanted, I'm not sure if I, anybody can see this, but uh, I've got a plaque for you um, that, uh, you know, thanks you for your service with, for the time when you served as chairman. So uh, I appreciate it, Brad. You know, please show this with uh, pride as you're continuing to serve the community through running our 911 uh call center. We, it's very much appreciated. We know that your service to our community ain't going away. So thank you. Thank you, Hugh. I appreciate you uh, doing that. I, I, I was an honor to serve as chairman and vice chairman. And, and, and you know, it's, it's bittersweet to leave. And I think it's a new set of eyes are always good. And, um, and, and, and I'm very grateful for where I'm sitting, actually, literally right now at 911. But uh, I, I do thank you for recognizing that. Well, it's at my house right now. I'll give it to you in about a year. I'm going to put it up on my wall. So, uh, but uh, thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, thank Madam you Clerk, turn. would you please get to our, our next item? Um, and this is for uh, uh, Mr. Bear Stevenson, who I believe I know is watching home. And uh, if you could uh, please read that resolution into the, uh, the record. This is a resolution honoring William Bear Stevenson for his service to the East Tennessee community. Hey, could I have a uh, motion for approval? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, I think that was the uh, the motion was from Commissioner Carringer, and that was uh, was that you, Commissioner Anders? Okay. Uh, if we could have this uh, read into the, uh, I, I we do need a vote. I would like at some point to have this particular resolution read into the record. So, uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read this into the record, uh, Mr. Stevenson has done an incredible job serving our community. Uh, if any of you have been to a nonprofit organization, you know, he, he learned his, how to, to give back from his mom and he is applying that to his, his every day by helping nonprofits through our community raise a lot of money to keep them going. And, you know, we're, we're so thankful. And I told Bear that you know, one of the last things I wanted to do on county commission was make sure that he was properly honored for his years of service to uh, East Tennessee. And, I'm sure all the commissioners and many folks who are watching this meeting have probably seen him uh, working so hard to help so many good organizations. So before the vote, I would like uh, the clerk, if you could read this into the record 
And as I told uh, Mr. Stevenson in the future, like hopefully in the summer of next year, we will be uh, helping organize a kind of Bear Stevenson, this is your life type of uh, celebration event to thank him for all he's done and invite all representatives from all the nonprofits that he's helped to it. But Madam Clerk, if you could please read that into the record okay. before we vote. Whereas William Bear Stevenson was born in Oak Ridge, Tennessee and moved to a farm in Anderson County when he was five months old, later attending Dutch Valley Elementary School and graduating from Clinton High School in 1966. And whereas Mr. Stevenson is a lifelong member of Pleasant Hill Baptist Church, where he served as the music director and member of the Board of Trustees. And whereas in his teenage years, as well as later in life, Mr. Stevenson had been active in the 4-H organization and the American Legion Boys State and Boys Nation. And whereas Mr. Stevenson attended Tennessee Technological University in Cookville, Tennessee, where he was class president, a student government officer, and a member of the Army ROTC. And whereas following graduation, Mr. Stevenson served for two years in the United States Army, including a tour in Vietnam where he achieved the rank of first lieutenant and further served the United States Army Reserves. And whereas Mr. Stevenson was a founding director and only chairman of the board of directors of the Community Bank of East Tennessee from its inception in 1998 until it was sold in 2012. And whereas after graduating from National Auction School in 1983 and the Certified Auctioneer Institute at the University of Indiana in 1988, Mr. Stevenson established the first auction company in Anderson County. And whereas Mr. Stevenson has served in various capacities in the Tennessee Auctioneers Association, the National Auctioneers Association, and the Tennessee Real Estate Commission, and was inducted into the Tennessee Auctioneers Hall of Fame in 1999. And whereas Mr. Stevenson's involvement in civic and professional organizations is vast and diverse, including such organizations as, as the JCs, Clinton Rotary Club, Anderson County Chamber of Commerce, United Way, East Tennessee PBS, the Free Medical Clinic, Methodist Medical Center Foundation, and many more. And whereas Mr. Stevenson has always had a strong desire to help raise money for charitable organizations throughout Knox County and East Tennessee. And whereas Mr. Stevenson has held over 2,600 benefit auctions, which have raised over $20 million for such charitable organizations as Friends of the Smokies, Knoxville Museum of Art, Child Help, Ronald McDonald House, Sir Thomas Center, UT Gardens, UT School of Music, Hope Center, and Knoxville Botanical Gardens, to name only a few. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Commission of Knox County as follows. The Knox County Commission hereby honors William Bear Stevenson for his many and varied contributions to Knox County in East Tennessee. Be it further resolved that this resolution be presented to William Bear Stevenson. Be it further resolved that if any notifications are to be made to effectuate this resolution, then the county clerk is hereby requested to forward a copy of this resolution to the proper authority. Be it further resolved that this resolution, resolution is to take effect from and after its passage as provided by the Charter of Knox County, Tennessee, the public welfare requiring it. All right, thank you. And that motion is properly before us. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please lead us in a roll call vote? Yes. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill. Aye. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Bear. I'll see you soon. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, introduce the next item? The next item is resolution R-20-8-106. It's honoring Ms. Richard Mr. Chairman, we'd have to add this to the agenda before we could uh, process it. Uh, this one is a uh, new one. Uh, how about this? We can, uh, let's have a vote right now to add that to the agenda. 
We'll have a one item agenda vote. Agenda. I'm Second. sorry. Second. Motion to add to the agenda. Second. Yeah. All right. Madam Clerk, all in fact, please lead a roll call vote. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Mr. Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Mr. Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Mr. Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. All members present voting aye. Okay, that's on the agenda. And uh, now I'll have a uh, motion for approval. So moved. Motion. motion to approve. All right, that was uh, Commissioner Daly came in first with the first and Commissioner Schoonmaker with the second. So uh, Madam Clerk, if you could uh, go ahead and uh, I'd like to read that into the record. Okay. Chair. Is... Yes. Are you, you're reading in six? Uh, we are on uh, the one to recognize uh, Law Director Bud Armstrong. Okay, and then you're going to go back to amendments? Uh, yes, actually, then we're going to go back to public forum, then we'll do a, amendments to set the agenda. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, thank you. All right, go ahead. Uh, Madam Clark, if you could please read that to the agenda and the um, into the record, please. Okay, this is a resolution honoring Richard B. Arms Richard B. Bud Armstrong, Jr. for his service as Knox County Law Director. Whereas Richard B. Bud Armstrong Jr.'s term as Knox County Law Director expires August 31st, 2020, and whereas Mr. Armstrong was first elected to the Office of Knox County Law Director by countywide vote in 2012 and was subsequently reelected in 2016, and whereas over the course of his eight year ten tenure as Law Director, Bud Armstrong has served as counsel to almost every board and committee of Knox County, including the Knox County Commission and the Knox County Board of Education and all the elected officials and departments comprising Knox County government. And whereas as the law director, Bud Armstrong has successfully defended the, not the county in all levels of trial and appellate advocacy. And whereas Bud Armstrong's visionary leadership as law director resulted in many cost saving measures for Knox County, including saving millions by decreasing Knox County's real reliance on outside counsel to defend Knox County in litigation, reducing legal settlement payouts, and most notably, implementing workers' compensation protection for the teachers of Knox County. And whereas early in Bud Armstrong's first term as law director, he worked with the Knox County trustee to establish the law director's office as delinquent tax attorney and helped to implement policies to streamline property tax collection which measures have saved and continue to save millions of dollars for the taxpayers of Knox County. And whereas additionally under Bud Armstrong's leadership, workers' compensation benefits are administered in-house by Knox County and no longer outsourced, saving the county approximately $1.5 million a year. And whereas Bud Armstrong successfully managed the law director's office of 21 employees, including 10 deputy attorneys, and leaves the office better than he found it and on an upward tra trajectory. And whereas Law Director Armstrong was also recognized as a leader among his peers throughout the state, having been elected president of the Tennessee County Attorneys Association. And whereas Bud Armstrong represented the people and taxpayers of Knox County in all decisions he made as law director. And above all else, he supported, obeyed, and defended the Knox County Charter. And whereas law director Bud Armstrong has demonstrated a steady and reliable ability to execute and administer the various legal matters of Knox County government in a professional, straightforward, and highly competent manner. And whereas Mr. Armstrong has served Knox County with the utmost integrity, impartiality, and dedication throughout his tenure as Knox County Law Director. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Commission of Knox County, Tennessee, as follows. The Knox County Commission hereby honors Knox County Law Director Richard B. Bud Armstrong, Jr. for his eight years of dedication in the handling of the legal affairs of Knox County, Tennessee, and faithful service to the citizens of Knox County. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to Law Director 
Richard B. Armstrong Jr. be it further resolved that this resolution is to take effect from and after its passage as provided by the Charter of Knox County, Tennessee, the public welfare requiring it. Thank you. That motion is properly before us. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please lead a roll call vote? Commissioner Bussler. I am glad to be the first one to cast yes. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler? Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly? Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J? Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs is out. Commissioner Gill? Aye. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer? Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Mr. Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. All members present voting aye. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Clerk. Now we're going to go. Um, that covers the honorary resolutions. We're going to work our way back to public forum and then to setting the agenda. Uh, just briefly for members of the public who may be watching this meeting for the first time, folks who uh, have been with us, uh, who watch all the meetings, uh, big picture, we have uh, Knox County Commission meets twice a month. We have a work session, usually the third uh, Monday of the month, and we have the official Board of Commissioners meeting on the fourth Monday of the month. Sometimes that's tweaked around holidays. The purpose of last week's meeting was a first pass through the agenda. Many of the items were, in fact, last week's meeting went on relatively late as far as work sessions go, and many of the items have already been discussed, uh, debated, and some have been put on something called our consent agenda. And what that means is if you've got a long list of items from the school system, for example, all of those were reviewed last week. Some of them were debated, some of them were discussed, and they've been put together so that tonight when we do our vote, we can vote on all of those together, especially when you think that under this electronic medium, we have to do these roll call votes. You, you, nobody wants to have a roll call vote on 60 different items. So what we've done is create a consent agenda for the schools. We've also got a consent agenda for the regular county business. We've also got some things on the agenda that are related to ordinances that have to be read and voted on at least twice and several are up for the second time. We also have, and if you've looked at the agenda, we have public forum listed on our agenda for both the beginning and the end. And I've had a lot of uh, citizens sign up to speak at public forum, uh, most of which are about the health department and the mask mandates. When we're meeting together in the uh, main assembly room, what we usually do at these meetings is say, well, because uh, we have both a, uh, a right and duty to conduct our business. So we can't have public forum go on for two hours and then not be able to actually get done what we do, I usually say, hey, can y'all pick a spokesperson and we'll give you say 15 minutes if the spokesperson leads it and then we'll, we'll move on when everybody wants to speak on one subject. I realize tonight that that's gonna be difficult to do, especially if so many folks have uh, come in via Zoom. So what we're gonna do tonight is I've got, I'm gonna let the first five folks who have signed up in order of sign up speak at the first public forum. Then I'll check our time and everybody gets five minutes We'll move on to uh, getting the work done that we've got to do. And then if you'll notice, we do have a second public forum on our agenda and we'll try to get to uh, the, the rest of folks who haven't had a chance to speak during that uh, public forum. So I'm hopeful uh, and I'll watch the clock just to, to make sure that we can try to get everybody who wanted to speak to speak and uh, move forward on that. So uh, looking to my fellow commissioners, uh, considering how many folks want to speak at public forum, does that seem, it, it, as chair, it seems like the, the fairest way to, to, to do it so that we can balance, everybody gets heard, yet we also still have a chance to get to through our agenda to get the work done. So um, I'm seeing in the chat button, uh, no, no hands raised, so generally, all right, so that's what we'll do. Uh, We've got, uh, I want to thank our IT department so for, for sending out these links, but the first person who signed up for public forum is Mr. Rick Roach. So Mr. Roach, if you're here, I think I saw you earlier in the waiting room. So Mr. Roach, you're recognized. And uh, you. you've got five minutes, Mr. Roach. All right, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Rick Roach, uh, 2404 Victoria Avenue, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37915. Um, just to uh, kind of have you all familiar with with where I'm coming from. 
I am a lifelong Knoxville native. Uh, I am, uh, I raised two children here in Knoxville, was married for 30 years, uh, have uh, five grandchildren, uh, three of whom are in uh, Knoxville, Knoxville, Knox County Public Schools currently, and the other two are attending a school here in Knox County. Um, I'm raising a question today. The agenda, uh, on the agenda, it says Premier Medical, uh, and that was from the work session. I was just looking for an avenue in which to come to you to offer uh, my comments, but it does have to do entirely with uh, the whole COVID-19 situation that we have going on here in Knox County uh, and in the country as a whole, in the world as a whole. Um, specifically the testing, the laboratory testing uh, that goes on um, and the contract with Premier is an example of this. Uh, Knox County is in serious catch-up mode uh, with this uh, cold COVID-19 situation and um, we've had a lot of controversy about compliance from the masks to uh, businesses, uh, hours that they keep, uh, the protocols for uh, consumers in particular businesses uh, as they enter and exit those, those businesses. And even at the work session uh, Monday, last Monday, I observed uh, a group of people come in unmasked and they were not safe distancing. And um, Actually, one of them kind of said something to me as I looked at them and like, you know, why aren't you doing what the rest of the folks here are voluntarily doing? And uh, he kind of had a word for me and I let that pass. However, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really want to focus on this and it, it has to do with how the county overall is handling, whether it's the health department, whether it's the mayor's office, whether it's you county commission. Um, there's no consistency. Uh, there's no coming together and saying, we're going to do this and we're all going to go by this and this is the way it's going to be. Okay. Um, and we're all going to example the best uh, behavior in order to deal with this uh, pandemic. Uh, we've had the mayor um, not go um, covered in public and in close quarters to other people, yet we uh, can't even get a, a true uh, uh, dealing with uh, the mask. Uh, everybody wears a mask. Here's the situations in which you, you wear them. Um, I've, I've had to listen to people and their concerns about uh, the school system and the proper protocols and the reassurance even from teachers to staff members uh, to students. Um, uh, and parents, of course. Um, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of uh, worry going on out there. Um, I re remember listening to uh, Commissioner Bustler questioning uh, Dr. Buchanan last week, and uh, and okay, and uh, offering uh, asking some very hard questions, um, and um, I think she handled it pretty well. However, um, I questioned her beyond that uh, as she was leaving. Um, and because I had some specific things that had come to my attention, um, and that is how um, the county is handling a particular uh, situations as regards county employees in particular public locations, um, such as schools, libraries, and the like. Um, and I don't think there's a consistency going on here in terms of when a potential county employee has come in contact with someone who has tested positive or they have tested positive and then that there is proper notification of everyone who has come in contact with that person. Uh, the protocols have not been applied correctly or equally. Um, people talk, but they're afraid to talk publicly and, and discuss this. 
Hey, Mr. Roach, you've got about 30 seconds, sir. Okay. So you, I, 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 would just, I would just want you all to consider this, and maybe it can be discussed further on down the line, and some hard questions can be asked. Uh, especially from the mayor's office and uh, human resources as to what the protocols are. And keep in mind that uh, if they say that, no, this is the way we're doing things, well, we have some information out here that maybe that's not the way things are going. Okay. That's, I conclude my comments. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Roach. Okay, uh, the next uh, citizen on the uh, public forum is uh, Vernon Henry. Uh, Mr. Henry, if you're here, please let us know. See so here, are you, we're seeing him on here. I see his name on here, but it's uh, he's muted. I, yeah, Mr. Henry, are you, are, are you able to hear me? Yes, 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 yes. Thank well, you. I'm sorry. I apologize for whatever. Uh, it popped up momentarily, then disappeared. So you'll have to look at a blank screen, and I apologize. Uh, Mr. Nystrom, uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Uh, what I'm coming before you right now is I'm requesting the board to remove all members of the current health board, with the exception of County Mayor Mr. Jacobs, due to malfeasance and ineptness. Uh, this virus has been made out to be the harbinger of death, and it's smart enough, it appears to distinguish between Walmart and churches gatherings, pride, uh, protesting, rioting in bars, it is able to tell time, it's been used as a quintessential excuse for everything that is wrong and missing, it has become the new boogeyman to scare our children, it has been used to create fear mongering and panic, it's pitted it neighbors against one another, it's caused community discord, and in some situations, acts of violence when one makes a decision not to wear a mask. Now, I've got a lot of information. I'm going to try to keep it very, very short and sweet and to the point. By the way, uh, Mr. Henry, I'd say if, if you got the video thing, uh, if you could switch that on to, that would help everybody see I, you. I'm trying. I really am trying. It just won't. I, I understand. Oh, well, there you there, are. Oh, there I am. Yeah. <laughs> when technology works, it works wonderfully. And when it doesn't, it works terribly. Uh, one of the things that I was trying to bring across is that the WHO and the CDC considers the wearing of masks essential because classifying the large number of individuals in the United States is asymptomatic. Let's look at the real numbers throughout the world. We have 7.8 billion people on the planet, yet we've lost 181,000. That critical fatality rate is 0.01. The United States at 331 million and the loss of 180,000 is 0.549%. Tennessee is 0.22%. Knox County is 0.011%. It's absolutely amazing that we have actually pushed this to the point where we have. And the aspect of a mask mandate for a disease that is affecting actually a very, very small number of individuals in the United States. Like I said, I have a great deal of information. There were a couple of specific questions that did and have been coming up through with conversations I've had with other medical people in the area. And I apologize, you can only see the top part of my head, it appears. One of the specific questions that seems to be raised quite frequently is concerning with the state record of COVID-19 deaths in Knox County which apparently stands at 53. What has been brought forth is by several medical staff is the actual death due to or with CV was an autopsy performed to confirm stated reason. If autopsy was not conducted, why and who authorized the lack of confirmation? If CV was not the cause of death and was listed as the primary cause, is the hospital not guilty of fraud? to secure federal funding? And if so, is the, is the Knox County Health Department culpable in aiding and abetting the first act of committing a federal crime? Uh, the second part to this is if indeed there is a large number of false positives and I have peer review documentation I can send to each member of the board if they would like it. I was actually going to bring that today with me, but under the circumstances, 
I can still provide that if you would like to present that information out there. But uh, as listed in the International Journal of Geriatrics and Rehabilitation, stating July 17, 2020, stating 20% false negatives, 30% false positives. And then there was the FDA on July 10, 2020, uh, that were not able to confirm positive results. Before the health department decides to turn a family upside down by implementation a 24 day now quarantine, which is once in mind, most families can just not handle that type of financial stress. But in fact, due to the large number of false positives, before we quarantine anybody, are we not and should we not be doing a second test to confirm that in fact they are positive. Last part of this is that I'm gonna ask you quite honestly, is who should be on the future of the board? And it's a very, very important concept. We should be looking at immunologists, virologists, epidemiologists, psychologists, and an economist. The quest concerning an economist cannot be taken lightly, nor should it be. Look at the financial damage caused by this group who has failed to do their due, uh, due diligence in creating no harm. In a you got about 30 more seconds or so. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm almost done in 30 seconds. <laughs> they have failed to understand the long and short term uh, consequences of their actions upon the residents and the government of this county. Finally, the question is, what is uh, the health department's target to remove all restriction? It appears to be zero infectious disease and zero deaths. Human population will never reach a zero uh, viral infection or death rate on earth. How much lower does the COVID-19% need to be before the health department stops stepping on our liberties, our freedoms, our constitutional rights? Considering the statistics in relation to the public ordinances, I believe the county would be better served by removing the board and allowing the US citizens to take personal responsibility for our lives. I appreciate the time I tried to cut that. I cut so much out. Uh, I can actually send the full. Yes, Mr. Henry, what I would say, yeah, I would say, as I mentioned the other day, uh, absolutely, if you send it to the commission general email address, uh, Drusilla okay. will make sure that it, uh, your, your information gets forwarded to all the commissioners. So if, if you've got it, if you can PDF it or, or however, we'll make sure that everybody gets it. I can do that because like I said, there's a, a large number of uh, files as well as peer reviews and other information that I would like to share. And I'm hoping to have the opportunity for them to take the time and read these. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks again, Mr. Henry. Uh, next is uh, Mr. Hill, Mr. Kevin Hill. And Mr. Hill, you've got about five minutes. Okay. I'm going to get my camera live here. There uh, you go. If you'll let me get my, unfortunately, the te technical thing, it's a, it's a whiz for all of us, huh? <laughs> or, pardon me, my notes dropped. I just need to pull them up. Okay. Kevin Hill, Knox, Knoxville, Tennessee, 509 uh, Cambridge Street. Allow me to begin my comments tonight with a quote from one of the world's most respected newspapers, The Telegraph in London. So now we know Sweden got it largely right, and the British establishment, and I might add the U.S. as well, including Knox County, got it largely wrong. Anders Tegnell, Stockholm's epidemiologist king, has pulled off a remarkable triple whammy, far fewer deaths per capita than Britain. Keep these words in mind as I address our situation in Knox County. All but one member of the Board of Health has performed malfeasance by not engaging in a multidisciplinary approach and proper scientific evaluation and making regulatory decisions. There is no excuse with our university resources located in Knox County that our Board of Health did not take pause to evaluate the full scope of consequences from its regulatory actions. Did the board consider the well-established statistic that for each point rise in unemployment we experience and added 37,000 deaths. We have nationally experienced approximately 10 point rise. And so we can attribute a minimum of 370,000 deaths in America directly resulting from the measures we have engaged in as a response to COVID-19. This truly is an instance 
where the cure is, is proving worse than the disease. Dr. Buchanan has stated, we must rely on data from the CDC and the WHO. The WHO is an organization the United States specifically withdrew from for their faulty information and inept practices covering up the actions of the communist Chinese government. The CDC garners an incredible amount of money from the distribution of vaccines and the ownership of patents on vaccines. The reason this is relevant is that our board is uncritically following the CDC without concerning, without concern for the organization's conflict of interest about preventing treatment strategies. If successful prophylactics are found, then the, necess the necessity of a vaccine is diminished and the financial benefit to the CDC is greatly harmed. To be clear, I'm not suggesting collusion on the part of board members but that they are uncritically following a narrative that poses a threat to us. We require board members willing to think more broadly before enacting regulations. A key qualification for being a member of the Board of Health is a scientific curiosity that takes into consideration multidisciplinary approaches to topics of health and conflicts of interest such as the CDC holds. There is a host of research that either questions the efficacy of mask use in preventing viral spread or shows the pro prolonged use of masks is harmful to the wearer's health. However, because of this board, employees in Knox County currently are forced to wear masks up to eight hours a day. Did you know that medical professionals are not the ones who ensure safe work environments related to masks? It is OSHA consultants who are tasked with that role. These professionals ensure persons normally working in masks for prolonged periods are doing so in highly tuned and controlled environments with specialized HVAC systems. Did our board consult OSHA experts about impact of wearing masks for extended periods when HVAC systems are not designed to support them? Did this board seek out dissenting experts and consider the arguments before enacting mask mandates? This board's actions and are in direct harm of the citizens of Knox County has revealed the members lack of qualification to fulfill the role given them precisely because the board is not merely an advisory agent to the county legislative body. And therefore the threshold for qualifications is and must be higher than competent medical skills. This board has sweeping regulatory power that has broad impact on the economic and mental health status of citizens. Therefore, due to the malfeasance of the members, I propose that most of the statutory and all of the appointed members do not meet the qualifications necessary for performance of their duties and thus are not a good fit for the proper persons to hold office as members of the Knox County Board of Health. If the relevant state statutes allow commission to remove board members other than the appointed ones, then I suggest commission consider this action as well for the same above mentioned reasons. The one exception to this request would be Mayor Jacobs, who through his negative votes and dissenting voice has exercised the proper discipline to administer the board powers given the Knox County Board of Health under state law. Thank you. All right, very good, thank you. That was right at five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Hill. Okay, our uh, next citizen for public forum is uh, Emily Houston. So Ms. Houston, if you're there, if you could uh, come in. Uh, Mr. Link, if you could make sure she's connected there. Hello, I am here. How are you? We're good, thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you for the time. And I will try to be less than five minutes. Um, I, um, I am a District 4 citizen and I live right behind Bearden High School. Um, so currently in Knox County, um, I really feel I will second um, the mandate that, or what Mr. Henry and Mr. Hill had to say. So I feel that this mandate is wreaking havoc on our citizens, especially those um, in, especially in my situation, I am a person who has a um, doctor's note and an excuse not to wear a mask, but I don't wear that around. And so I have been um, harassed multiple times. Um, <clears throat> one just recently at Target. 
And so, and, unless I want to staple that to my shirt or my forehead, you know, no one's going to really know what's going on. So, and really it's not their business as well. So I've been called a threat to my community at an outdoor farmer's market in the near 100 degree heat in the middle of July. <laughs> I have also been called a bad mother right in front of my son in Kroger. Um, so the real threat to our society is the irrational and illogical fear that is plaguing us right now. Once a loving and beautiful community we live in is becoming so fearful and hostile toward their fellow citizens. They are willing to make threats, degrade, and threaten personal safety, all in the name of a virus with a 99.5% survival, survival rate. We are killing small businesses and creating a hostile environment for our families in Knox County. We are now how many days in to slow the spread? <laughs> um, and currently, I, I just saw the statistics today. Um, 0.46% of Knox County citizens have an active COVID case. And 1.29% of Knox County citizens have tested positive. Um, I feel it's time to um, restore decency in our community um, and to repeal and replace the board that's currently um, over these mandates. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, stick around. Uh, one thing, one error I made, I guess, getting back on Zoom, I forgot to ask everybody to state their name and address for the record. And I see both Vernon and Kevin are still on. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, Miss Houston, just state your name and address formally for the record, please. Okay, sure. It's Emily Houston and it's um, 8152 Faircrest Lane, Knoxville 37919. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I might ask Thank both you. Mr. Mr. Henry and Mr. Hill, either one, if y'all could both uh, chime in briefly just to state your name and address. I don't think I caught the addresses for the record. And this is something we do at all of our public forums. Are you able to hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, got a, even got a photo this time. Yeah. Vernon Henry, uh, Huxley Road, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37922. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, Mr. Kevin, Mr. Hill? Yes. Kevin Hill, 509 Cambridge Street. Knoxville, Tennessee, 37920. All right, thank you so much. I am not sure if uh, Mr. Roach is still on. He may have um, said his piece and moved on, but I, I, I'd say we, Drusilla might have it. So, all right, moving on. Um, thank you, Ms. Houston. Uh, the next uh, citizen we have is Kim uh, Sprague. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Kim, please correct me if I have not, but if, if you're here, if you could please, uh, Mr. Link, if you could let her in. Ms. Sprague, are you here? All right, no answer. All right, we'll move on and- Is she here? Uh, is she here? Are you here? Some of us were having a problem with the audio. Okay, all right, I, I apologize for oh, that. Can yeah. you hear me now? Yes, we can, yeah, thank okay. you. Okay, it said the host muted me, so I was like, no, no, don't go on. Um, I don't know if you can see me. It's a shame if you can't because well, my we could see a big pink K. So <laughs> uh, there, there, there might be a camera thing on there. See if you can uh, get your camera to turn on, ma'am. Okay, I think. Okay, the host was. Not there you there. go. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I, I normally have clear skin, and I have big, humongous sores that my teenagers think is hilarious. Um, they call me pepperoni face. Um, tables are turned. That's from wearing my mask. But anyways, the reason I am here is first I have to say, I, I just moved here from another state and it's a state that I was driven out of uh, by the lack of liberties, to be honest with you. And so when I found out that we have a board that is appointed, that is relatively um, lacking accountability as far as the spirit of a representative government goes, I was really disappointed to see that here in Tennessee. Um, that being said, this particular board, it's a health board. Um, are they competent in handling the scope of mandates that they're issuing? 
And I would say they are not. I am not a health care provider, but I am a mental health care provider. I'm a LCSW. You have my name. I'll give you my um, address. It's 12017 Inglecrest Lane, Knoxville 37934. Um, and I would say that I'm seeing, you know, I don't know exactly what their licenses are in the health field, but they seem to be very myopic and really missing um, a lot of other health issues that are collateral damage to their mandates. Um, starting with the economic hardships brought along by curfews. As a mental health provider, um, I'm dealing with a lot of people in crisis. I'm seeing a spike in suicides. Um, in my role, I do work with children. I'm seeing an increase in anxiety related disorders. Um, those may seem like nebulous things, but there are specific causes that that bring increase in suicide and anxiety. It's things like isolation and hopelessness. Um, you know, one of your, your speakers that supports the mandates, and it sounded like wants them even stricter and, and enforced more, um, said there's a lot of fear and worry. And yes, there's a lot of fear and worry. And I wonder how, how um, founded in reality it really is. Other people have mentioned the rate of illness and death and is that really um, equitable to the amount of fear and worry that we're casting on people? Um, when you have people that are so afraid that as the Journal of American uh, JAMA, Journal of American, I'm not a doctor, but the health board should know what JAMA is. They had a recent peer reviewed article and it said, and I quote, fear related extreme isolation from COVID-19 is causing increased mental health issues. That, that goes to um, increased fears that are causing anxiety, stress, um, people whose finances have been cut back, um, additional stress, not having food, not having enough money to buy their medicine. And I think that the health board needs to ask themselves, are children going hungry? Is that healthy? Are people going without meds, is that healthy? People feeling so afraid and causing other health issues, mental and physical, is that healthy? And I wonder as health providers, if they've been so myopically focused on COVID-19 that they're missing all these other health issues. Um, you may or may not know that research has shown more than ever that one of the key factors in suicides is isolation. By putting people in masks, we are causing a form of isolation. By making people afraid of this virus to the degree that we are, we are putting people into isolation. Look at our children. So many of them aren't in schools. That isolation, as well as the hopelessness that we are spurring on with this, both are humongous contributors to suicides. And we, you all know that the suicide rates are high. Domestic violence rates are out the roof right now. Child abuse is really high right now. Those are being increased by the anxiety and fear that I believe the masks are um, endorsing and pushing forward. And I would just say that this health board is not looking at all these other health issues, both physical and mental health issues. And I think they're incompetent. I think that they're, they're way out of their league. And um, I really ask that they be um, reviewed and that, that their powers be cut back. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we're at a point in the meeting where we're uh, just past the, uh, the one hour mark. And uh, I would like for us to go ahead and begin the actual work that we've got to accomplish tonight before we come back to public forum. So this should be roughly uh, almost at a halfway mark for those of you who are also here on public forum. So I'm gonna move on, although right now might be a good spot if there are any uh, questions on this. this you know, we've had some folks bring up the mask questions and this. Uh, I remember at the work session, uh, Commissioner Anders had proposed a question to the uh, law director about some of these uh, that were proposed. So uh, what I might do now is just kind of a more as a follow up to these uh, to the uh, citizens that have brought this. 
I think Mr. Sanders has done some research on this. And, uh, you know, Mr. Anders, could you restate your question that you brought up last week at the work session? Yeah, I just want the law director's office to, to kind of talk about what happens if we, um, if we eliminate or remove or what's caused. And I mean, it sounds simple enough, uh, but what, what's the reality to it? And I, I hope that he can touch on that for us. Okay. Sure. Just let me go ahead and respond, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah Mr. Sanders, you're, you're recognized. All right. So the question essentially is posed is whether or not the county commission has the power to remove uh, members of the board, health, board of health, and if so, under what circumstances? And then several sort of cascading questions about what would happen in those circumstances. I think if you look at the applicable Tennessee code, it mandates the membership of the board. It does give the county commission the authority to remove members, quote, for cause, unquote. But it's really important for the county commission to understand that for cause does not mean that one disagrees with the policies that the uh, Board of Health is coming up with or enact or uh, regulate regulations that they enact. It does not mean you disagree with the science that they base their opinions on. Cause in uh, very simple terms means fraud, malfeasance or moral turpitude. That more or less means, and, and I've noticed a lot of the speakers have mentioned malfeasance because the board is selecting certain scientific propositions over others. That's not what malfeasance means in this circumstance. Malfeasance in this circumstance for to occasion a removal of a board member by this body would need to be something along the lines of committing a crime in office. This is not something that it's the, the statute is not designed for the board, for this body to reach into the board and remove a member simply because you don't like what the board is doing. I'm not sure if that is a reasonable place to start. Uh, perhaps the, perhaps uh, you can that follow up with whatever question you have beyond that. I was gonna say, I'll, I'll look in the uh, chat function if anybody, uh, Rhett tries to raise their hand. I'm trying to look over here at the uh, my fellow commissioners if anybody's got a question. Um, and frankly, if you've got it, uh, the, let me get it on the gallery view. Okay, all right. Uh, any commissioners have a question? It, just raise your hand. Yes, Commissioner Anders, you're recognized. Well, I think it, I mean, it's not on the agenda tonight for a vote. And I think that 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 consultation with the new commissioners, because if we try to add this to the agenda or if we, I mean, it's not been publicly noticed, I think it'd be unwise, but in giving it to the next commission of diff, four diff, new commissioners to deal with, I, I think they need to, to kind of deal with it, fill the onion back with the law director's office and, and have a conversation about it. I, I philosophically don't agree with everything that the health board has done, but um, I don't know that I want to go down the, the road of removing members just because we don't philosophically agree with them. I think they, I mean, they're all physicians or from the organizations that were recommended or required by state law. And if you remove them, you have no health board, you have no quorum. And those organizations may or may not send in other different names. They may send in the same names. Uh, nobody may be willing to serve after what they're going through right now. So I think that a conversation needs to be had and, and maybe they need to explain their processes better. Maybe they need to, um, you know, look into their other issues that the public brings up. But as this board tries to remove them, I think it's, it kind of sets us back to where we don't have one. And then what happens with the state if we don't have a, a functioning health board is the question. 
Uh, I mean, me personally, my biggest challenge is operational because there's not a resolution related to this that's on our agenda for tonight. And anything that is of such importance, we would have wanted to make sure that we had publicly noticed because as many arguments as the folks who've been with us tonight or have emailed us, there's also a lot of members of the public that feel opposite. And if this were something that we we're gonna vote on tonight, you'd want it to have made sure that you publicly noticed that a vote would be taking place so that folks in the public who have a belief one way or the other really need to know so that they can advocate for their positions to the uh, commission. And in this case, uh, that we, we just don't have a resolution in front of us that would have warranted public notice to, uh, to move on it. So I, I guess, Commissioner Anders, I'm agreeing with you on that. And I'll look to, uh, to that notice round up, I see you, Commissioner Smith, uh, to that notice regarding public notice, I'll look to the uh, law director on that. And right now I see Commissioner Smith and Commissioner Gill. So uh, I'm gonna prompt a question to the law director around that public notice aspect of this, then we'll go uh, Smith, Gill, Carringer. I don't know whether Mr. Book wants me to respond to the uh, question of public notice, but I think I can easily enough, as long as I'm on here, concur that this that such an item would need to be public noticed. Thank you. Uh, we'll go Smith, Gill, Carringer, Bussler. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like for the law director to follow up on what Brad ended on. What, what would happen if we did remove these people from their position? The institutions that are charged with giving us names, gave us the same names, or refused to give us any more names. What would happen with the state? Will we fall back under the state? Do we know what that would do for our funding for our health department? Uh, could you tell us what the process would be for that? All right, Mr. Smith, some of it I would have to speculate on and some of it really couldn't happen the way you're describing, but I'll try to get into as much as I can. The, the statute, again, gives, directs the number and the composition of this board. And the statute states that these societies nominate members to the board, which you all as the commission approved. So I've already opined that there have not even been allegations. So, and if, if, if I haven't stated it clearly enough, there not only do I not think there is cause to remove the members of the Board of Health, there have not even been allegations stated sufficient to remove the members of the Board of Health. The, the allegations that would be necessary to even have that inquiry, again, would amount to allegations of fraud, uh, malfeasance, or moral turpitude. And nobody that I have seen or heard from so far has made any such allegation against any of these members. But hypothetically, if a board member, if sufficient number members of the board somehow left the board, whether they resigned, whether they were run over by a bus, whatever, such that the board no longer had a quorum, which is a majority of its membership, so five members, if they no longer had a quorum, they would cease to function, they would cease to be able to pass new regulations, but they would still exist as a board, but they simply couldn't do anything because they didn't have a quorum. Now, if this body wishes not to have a board of health in Knox County, the only way that I see forward to do that is to revoke the statute or the, I'm sorry, the ordinance that establishes the Board of Health in Knox County. If you revoke the ordinance that establishes a Board of Health in Knox County, I believe it's ordinance 38-33, then Knox County would no longer have a Board of Health. And the Knox County and the functions that are now being performed by the Board of Health would be performed by the state, either the state commissioner of health or through the governor in his executive orders, as long as the governor has those emergency powers. So uh, there really is no middle ground. You either have a board of health here in the county or you have the state taking over those functions. Does the state have the power to refuse to take back those functions that we have requested to have? I don't believe so. In, in essence, the state gives us, the, statu the statute reads that we may have a board of health. And if we have a board of health, 
that board of health is entitled to do certain things. The statute does not mandate we have a board of health. So if we don't, we're just like those other 86, 87, whatever counties that don't have a board of health. And the state looks to these issues rather than the local board of health. Now, as far as issues like funding and such, I, would, I couldn't opine on that right now. I wouldn't, I'm not aware that there would be any issues, but I just haven't looked at those issues. Would, would that mean that our health department employees be, would become state employees and we would lose control over some of the directions that are not the Board of Health, but our health department takes? I believe Board of Health employees would remain county employees, but again, I, that's that's an issue I'm just simply not prepared to speak on authoritatively right now. The as uh, far as I understand it, the Board of Health or the Health Department itself is also established by county ordinance. I think it's 3832, and it is under the mayor's office. But the uh, health, but Dr. Buchanan, as both health director and health officer of the county, which are statutory positions, have has certain authority granted to her by statute that are outside the um, Board of Health. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you, Commissioner Smith. Uh, next, Commissioner Gill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, thank you, Mr. Sanders, for clarifying the role of the Board of Health and the Health Department. And I want to make a statement of support for both organizations. And I know that there are people in the public um, who have said they disagree with the mass mandate and ordinance, but I've been contacted by lots of constituents who understand we're in the middle of a pandemic and that mass mandate is needed in order for our economies to open. Now, if you disagree with that process, then you need to disagree on the national level with the directions that have been provided to the state and the local level. Thank you, Commissioner Gill. Uh, Commissioner Carringer. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make a comment on it. Um, and, I, and I think um, Commissioner Anders also for getting the um, description of what the Board of Health is. But from being from doing a lot of door door to door here in the last few months, this this was one of the biggest concerns or complaints, I should say, by the, uh, the people that I knocked on the door. It was more of what they were being told to do instead of worried about um, the coronavirus. And so, you know, what's been really frustrating, I think, to all of us as commissioners is that we've received, I don't know how many emails and phone calls of people thinking it's us because Mayor Jacobs votes on this board, they have immediately thought that it was county commissioners voting and saying, why did you vote that way? Why'd you, you know? And so going out and trying to explain it to the public um, has been very difficult in, you know, our hands being tied as to, you know, what we do. So, um, you know, that has been a big plus for Knox County, the fact that we do have our own Board of Health and we don't have to, you know, do like all the other counties uh, that do come under the state. So, um, you know, from having family in, in the medical practice and all, um, mask, if everyone's wearing mask, they do prevent uh, others from coming in contact with this. And until, as I've said and said, until we definitely have medication that we know works, until we have a vaccine, like we can treat the flu, and you know, you choose whether or not to get the vaccine, but there is medication that does work. Until we have these things in place, uh, as Pastor Arnold, Arnold just said in his devotion, we have all got to care about other people and we've all got to be patient and continue to get through this uh, because our economy cannot suffer another uh, close down. So, um, you know, it's, it's really a matter of um, respecting each other and, and common sense and um, taking care of ourselves as well as other people. It's just like when we close no smoking in restaurants, uh, that was to protect other people. So, um, but anyway, um, 
it's a difficult it's a difficult thing and as we've just heard from the law director's office it's not just simply you know you can get rid of the health board just because you may not like their stance or personality. So I want to agree with uh, Commissioner Anders and, and uh, Commissioner Gill and um, Commissioner Smith, the ones that have said that uh, I do think it's important for the next commission to uh, meet and decide which way they want Knox County to, to go on this uh, very right. important issue, which none of us ever really knew you know, how important, I guess, that the health board really was to Knox County. This is the first time. So uh, anyway, um, I, I do think it's something that the new commission probably needs to take up in a very serious way. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Carringer. And uh, the use of the chat function is just for the county commissioners. Uh, after you've spoken at public forum, uh, Rob, if you could go ahead, if you've already spoken, uh, move over to watching the meeting, the uh, uh, CTV or the uh, the the, the link through, uh, I think, YouTube, but CTV is broadcasting the meeting. So, um, yeah, so Rob, if you could go ahead and um, take, if you've already spoken at public forum, uh, use the chat and the, here it's just for our, um, for the commissioners. Uh, moving on, that was, uh, thank you, Commissioner Carringer and Commissioner Bussler. All right, hey, Charlie, uh, check your, uh, there you go, thank you. Well, that's probably the best part of my speech is what you missed. <laughs> but anyway, um, what I want to talk about was economical decisions made by the health department. Uh, I know a, a few businesses that have gone out of business because of being essential or non-essential. Uh, you have people that have loss of income and these are important things. Uh, if you're not producing, if, if you lose your business because you can't do business, because you're considered non-essential, I'm not sure who's supposed to make that decision because we have big uh, businesses that stayed in business that uh, because they had a grocery store inside their company and they sold also other things that were non-essential, what we said, they sold clothing, they sold fishing goods, they sold everything else. But these companies that did have those shops open couldn't be in business because they were specializing in one thing and they lost those business. So how can we look at the public and say, you have to shut down because we consider you non-essential. They also pay taxes and the small businesses pay more taxes than, than these large corporations to this government. And we some way along the line forgot the importance of those individual businesses. So I don't know how we take care of that. I'm not giving anything, I'm not taking anything away from the health department, but I do think that when you make a decision to put somebody out of business, which they have, then there's gotta be some sort of recourse for those individuals that have spent their life building a business up and then lose it over a pandemic that we're not sure we, we're, we know about the virus, we're learning more about it each day, and me being home because I was just close to someone um, is, um, I'm not used to being staying at home and my wife's about to shoot me for staying home because I have to do this because the health department required me to. So um, I'm just saying when we make these decisions, we got to take into other considerations than just the health issue of being physically strong but also mentally strong. And um, I see people going crazy over not being able to protect their businesses or their homes or provide for the family. So we've got to do something on that end of it to make sure that we don't go through this again and put so many people out of business. That's just the thought that I had. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Bussler. And I Wanted to give uh, Dr. Buchanan a, a quick chance to comment. And then uh, the next item on our agenda is we do have to set the agenda to move into the business. Uh, Dr. Buchanan, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Um, Martha Buchanan, 140 Dameron Avenue. Just to clarify, Mr. Bussler, um, the decision about essential, non-essential is actually a federal and state decision. It's not a local decision at all. That comes down from the federal government established. Um, CISA is the um, acronym, but I can't remember what CISA stands for. Um, but that came down from us from the feds and the state. So that wasn't something that was made, a decision that was made locally, just to clarify for you. 
All right, thank you, Dr. Buchanan. Okay, uh, not seeing the other raised hands, we're gonna move on. We're now at the uh, point on our agenda where we, uh, interestingly, we actually have to set the uh, agenda for the rest of the meeting. So uh, I'm gonna get my list out here. So if you're taking notes, all right, we have, uh, as you all recall, we had a very productive work session last week and we've got a lot of items that were put on consent, but we do have several that need to be either read or uh, action needs to be taken tonight. So here is the proposed agenda. Uh, we have the ads that will need to be voted on to be added to the agenda are items 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, 30, 43, 45, 58, 66. Okay. There are two items that will be deferred. That's items 42 and 72. And item 57 will be withdrawn. That was the item related to the uh, rugby park. The non-consent items are items one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 45, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71. Notes uh, for your personal notes, right to decide regarding these non-consent items. Item 30 under the school agenda was related to the Florida virtual school. It was a recent ad. Item 66 is related to the contract that we needed information on from the IT department. Item 67 is the hotel tax second reading ordinance and 68 is related to the merit system. Uh, other business, under other business, when we get to it, we will briefly discuss reorganization. So any other changes to that proposed agenda? All uh, right. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Daly. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make sure that tonight we go and do our business first before we do all the consents. Yeah. Because the consents will take time. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Jay. I just want to verify 45 is not on consent. Is that correct? Yeah, I pulled 45 off. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other hands? All right. Seeing none, can I get a motion to set the agenda? Move. Second. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Kanger to set the agenda with a second from uh, Commissioner Jay. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you have a roll call vote to set the agenda? Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Jay votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Mr. Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler? Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. All members voting aye. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. The agenda is now set. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you get with me, uh, this is my intent for the meeting and uh, Commissioner Daly did verify this. Uh, we're gonna dispense with doing the consent, both consent agendas here at the top and uh, start to move through all the action items. So if you could re go ahead and start at the uh, first uh, few items that are not on consent so we can work our way and try to knock all these, these out before getting to the consent items. Okay, we've taken care of items number one, two, three, four, five, six that Correct. you announced that are not on consent. So the next item is approval of minutes. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion for approval from Commissioner Schoonmaker with a second from Commissioner Biggs. 
Uh, Madam Clerk, please call a roll. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item. The next item is drives and roads, number seven, consideration of a closure of a portion of Oak Avenue, recorded but unbuilt right of way, totaling 76.98 square feet in the fourth commission district on first reading. Make a motion for approval. Second. From the chair. Motion to approve. All right, okay. Uh, and I'll, I'll second that. So we have a motion for approval from Commissioner Daly with a second from the chair. Uh, Madam Clerk, please lead a roll call. Commissioner, Lark Commissioner J. Aye. Mr. J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item, and we have two road closures. Just so all Item know. number eight is consideration of a closure of a portion of Dennis Fox Drive located at current terminus, totaling 100 feet in length. This is on second reading. Did I get a motion? motion for second, Biggs. Okay, who had the first? Commissioner Anders. All right, Commissioner Anders, Anders had the first. Second was Commissioner Biggs. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, our yes, third and yes. final road closure. Point of order. Uh, yes. Uh, I was not asked to vote. I'm sorry, Commissioner Beeler. I'm sorry, Bustler. Commissioner Bustler. Aye. Commissioner Bustler votes aye. So that makes Thank you, Charlie. Sorry about that. Sorry, Commissioner okay, uh, Bussler. Madam Clerk, next item, please. The next item is number nine, consideration <coughs> of a closure of a portion of Rocky Plains Lane located at current terminus totaling 100 feet in length on second reading. Okay, motion for approval. Second. Okay, uh, all right, then chair will make the motion. Second goes to Commissioner Gill. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right, it passes. Okay, Madam Clerk, next item. Line item transfers in the total amount of $1,249,294.53. Motion to approve. All right, we have a motion for approval from Commissioner Schoonmaker. And who was the second? Anders. Anders, okay. All right, Madam Clerk, uh, please call the roll. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. 
Aye. Commissioner Schoolmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler? Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler? Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly? Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J? Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs? Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Madam Clerk, next item. Notary applications, we have 166. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion from Commissioner Beeler with a second from Commissioner Gill. Okay, Madam Clerk, roll call. Commissioner Smith. Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. All members present voting aye. All right, thank you. We have uh, several spread of records, uh, Madam Clerk. Item 11 is spread of record, Board of Education member Terry Hill's letter of resignation as a member of the Knox County Board of Education representing the sixth school board district. No action required. Item number 12 is spread of record, the Knox County Commission Cable TV Committee summary of work for fiscal year 2019 through 2020. Number 13, spread of record, the Joint Education Committee Summary of Work for fiscal year 2019 through 2020. Number 14, spread of record, the Rules Committee Summary of Work for fiscal year 2019 through 2020. Okay. Very good. All right, now I think, uh, yes, Commissioner Anders. Yes, sir, I, I know it. Uh, they're wanting to do our business ahead of the game, but. I think it'd be more appropriate. Uh, the schools guys have been kind of had a rough week, I'd say. And if we could do the school consent and school one school item, we could get them out of here. Yeah, we've got one school item, and then we may want to just knock that out real quick, if that's uh, okay. I know Commissioner Daly brought that up. I, you're right; they have had a long week. That would be a good balance. Uh, but I think the one item that was not on consent was item 30. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you uh, introduce that item? Yes, that's resolution R-20-8-217. It's approving a contract and license agreement with Florida Virtual School for the purchase of educational software and services for a term ending August 9, 2021 at an estimated cost of $300,000 for the 2020 fall semester and not to exceed $1 million for the 2020 through 2021 school year. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion for approval from Commissioner Anders with a second from Commissioner Beeler. Madam Clerk, please lead a roll call vote. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler? Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler? Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly? Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Day votes aye. Commissioner Biggs? Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. No. Commissioner Gill? No. Commissioner Gill votes no. Commissioner Carringer? Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Smith votes aye. We have 10 aye votes, one no vote. Motion carries. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, to uh, Commissioner Anders' point, what I'd like to do is uh, it has been a long day for the school folks. So to, to balance this out, let's go ahead and just do the school consent and then we'll uh, move on with the other action items. So if I could get a motion for approval of the uh, school consent agenda. I'll move. Is there a second? Second. All right, thank you. Uh, the motion is from Commissioner Carringer. The second is from Commissioner Bussler. And uh, Madam Clerk, if you could go ahead and read the uh, school agenda, the school items into the record, and then we'll come back for the vote. Okay. Resolution 201 is approving an AVID products and services agreement for the provision of AVID programming at Austin East Magnet High School, Bearden Middle School, 
Career Magnet Academy, Carnes High School, Carnes Middle School, Northwest Middle School, and Whittle Springs Middle School for the 2020 through 2021 school year at a cost of $28,693. 202 is approving a license agreement with the University of Tennessee Knoxville Rec Sports Department for use of up to two of the four artificial turf fields at Sutherland Field Complex through July 14, 2021 for West High School athletic team practices at an approximate cost of $16,000. 203 is authorizing the acceptance of an award of a Tennessee Department of Education IDEA partnership grant for the 2020 through 2021 school year in the amount of $100,000 designated to the provision of real life work experiences and independent living skills to help young people with significant disabilities make successful transitions to productive adult life. 204 is authorizing the acceptance of an award of a Tennessee Department of Education IDEA partnership grant for the 2020 through 2021 school year in the amount of $10,000 designated to a district special education early childhood needs assessment to determine district special education preschool related needs. 205 is authorizing the acceptance of, a, of an award of a Tennessee Department of Education IDEA innovation grant for the 2020 through 2021 school year in the amount of $11,420 designated to support implementing innovative ways to remediate for the loss of instruction during school closures for students with disabilities. 206 is authorizing the acceptance of a Tennessee Department of Education voluntary pre-K grant for the 2020 through 2021 school year in the amount of $2,056,565.24 with required in-kind and matching funds of $686,000. 207 is approving an amendment to the grant contract with the Tennessee Department of, Edu of Education for the provision of Governor's Civic Seal mini grant designated for social studies for government on the go boxes and professional development, which amendment extends the term of the contract to expire December 31st, 2020. No local match required. 208 is approving a grant contract with the Tennessee Department of Human Services for the provision of pre-employment transition services, transition school to work program to benefit students with disabilities for the term of October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2021 and receipt of grant funding in the amount of $127,590, no local match required. 209, authorizing the acceptance of grant funds and donations for the Knox County Schools, as shown on the attached list and in the total amount of $6,554. 210 is approving contracts with City Shuttle LLC, Hillard Transport Incorporated, McConkie Transportation Incorporated, and RPM Transit Incorporated for student transportation services for the term of August 1st, 2020 through July 31st, 2023 which may be extended for two additional years, one year at a time, for a total of five years. 211 is approving a contract with the Whaley Construction LLC at a cost of $1,457,957.70 for the South Doyle High School Pedestrian Bridge Project. 212 is approving a contract with Energy Control Consultants Incorporated for the provision of security window film an installation not to exceed a cost of $500,000 for the term of September 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2021, which may be extended for four additional years, one year at a time, for a total of five years. 213 is approving fiscal year 2021 budget line, in item, budget line item transfers within the capital improvement plan in the total amount of $330,000. 214 is approving the schematic design for the new Adrian Burnett Elementary School by Johnson Architecture. 215 is approving a memorandum of understanding between the Knotts County Board of Education and the Knotts County Education Association as recommended by the collaborative conferencing team for a period of three years. That's all. And we need to be ready for the roll call vote. Sure, we have that motion is uh, properly before us. Uh, if you could please listen a roll call vote. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. 
Mr. Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Jay, Jay votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Mr. Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Commissioner. She may be away. She's muted. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. And Commissioner Carringer. Okay, hey, all right, Michelle has not voted. Uh, what, what is the vote count right now, Madam Clerk? 10 I, 10, 10 I. Okay, all right, it passes. Okay, so let's There's move Commissioner on. Commissioner Carringer. Huh. Okay, there she is. Okay, sorry, Michelle. All right, moving on to the, uh, let's go to the next item that is uh, off of the uh, consent agenda. Okay. Um... I have item number 57. Is that correct? Oh, no. I think we pulled 45. 45. I'm sorry. Yeah. 45 is resolution 502. It's approving three six month memorandums of understanding with Carnes Fire Department, Seymour Volunteer Fire Department, and Knox County Rescue for the provision of fire rescue emergency services within their designated response areas. Okay, could I get a, a, a moat on this one? I'm, I'm gonna look before the motion, I'm gonna look, uh, Commissioner Jay, you'd mentioned you had a, uh, an amendment or some extra information on this one you wanna bring. So I'll look to you to mention what, you're, what you had going on there and then we'll move from there to uh, whatever the right motion is. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not sure what the right motion is, if it's a substitute motion to the motion that's on the table here to approve as is, but um, I'd like to ask for uh, each of the contracts to be amended to have the termination clause be extended to 30 days. Right now it's listed as five days. Would that be considered a friendly amendment? I might look to the uh, law director and I'll look at uh, Dwight Vandevate as well. You can uh, make it. Let's go to the sponsor, which was Dwight's team and let's see if that would be uh, a friendly amendment to him. Well, I don't know whether it's a, the bottom line is you don't have a, you don't have a motion on the table. You've got to get that on the table. All right. Well, we'll go ahead. All right. So that's the uh, so you've got a substitute motion. No, to, you can't have a substitute till you get a motion. Then he can substitute. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and all right. Motion on the Commissioner table. Anders. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve with the change the on each MOU changing it to a thirty day uh, termination clause instead of a five day termination clause. Thank you. All right, seems fair. All right, we've got the motion from Commissioner Anders, the second from Commissioner Jay. All right, any discussion? Uh, uh, Mr. Vandevate, are you there? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, and we're uh, we're completely comfortable with the uh, amendment. All right, very good. Okay, all right, the motion is properly before us as amended. Uh, the motion was made by Commissioner Anders, seconded by Jay. Uh, Ms. Clark, would you please lead us in a roll call vote unless uh, any other commissioners have any questions about this item? Okay, yes, Commissioner Schoonmaker. Is uh, procurement uh, fine with this or were they even involved with this at all? Mr. Myers. He might not have. No, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Matt Myers, Knox County Procurement. I apologize, what was the question again to me? Was were you involved in this process and are you comfortable with changing the terms of the contract? Uh, yes, sir. Y yes, sir, to what? <laughs> yes, sir, we're, we were involved and yes, sir, we're uh, agreeable to changing. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Good question, Commissioner Schoonmaker. Okay, uh, this uh, motion is properly before us. Madam Clerk, would you please lead a roll call vote? Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. 
Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer? Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. All members voting aye. All right, very good. It passes. Okay, Madam Clerk, what are the uh, the next few items? Um, the next item is number 66. Okay, let's go with uh, item 66, if you could read that one then. Which is resolution 905, is to approve a contract with Microsoft Corporation to provide enterprise software and operation system licensing used on county workstations and servers. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve from Commissioner Schoonmaker with a second from Commissioner Gill. If I remember correctly on this one, uh, Zach, it was just the, the timing of it. We It was pulled originally from consent because we were just waiting to get a copy of the contract and that all seems to be resolved. Is that correct? Yes, Chairman, that is correct. All right, thank you. All right, are there any other uh, questions for Mr. Webb? Okay, this motion is properly before us. Madam Clerk, would you please conduct a roll call vote? Commissioner Bussler. Commissioner Bussler. Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. Commissioner Beeler. Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner J. Aye. Commissioner J votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Aye. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer. Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith. Aye. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom. Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker. Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders. Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. All members present voting aye. aye. All right, thank you. It passes. Okay, uh, we've got one more item here. We've got item 67. And for my fellow commissioners and the public and those who are also uh, waiting to speak at public forum and everybody for zoning, uh, here's what I'd propose that we do. We're gonna go ahead and hear item 67. Uh, we then, we've got a relatively brief zoning meeting tonight. Uh, knock on wood, of course, how many times have one of us said we had a short zoning meeting and it ended up taking two hours? But at least at face value, it looks relatively brief. So what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and do the uh, second reading for item 67. Then we'll take a uh, five minute break or so and come back. Um, uh, Randy, I saw you cringe on that one. Uh, you, we, uh, we do need to, 10 minute break, okay, all right. I thought you were opposed to breaks or something. So, all right, so we'll take a 10 minute break. And uh, can, when we reconvene, we'll, be, we'll complete our land use and zoning meeting. We'll then come back to the commission agenda. Now, uh, Zach and Rob are here. I know that they want, I wanna make sure it's very clear. When we did these meetings before, back in March, April, May, if you closed out of one Zoom, um, it kind of, it put that Zoom to rest. However, and uh, Rob, if you could please clarify by chiming in on this, someone's gonna stay in the regular commission meeting Zoom to keep that Zoom room active while we go to the other Zoom room to hear the zoning part of the meeting. We'll then finish the zoning and land use. We will come back to the original county commission meeting still alive in that other Zoom room. Uh, we will go through finishing up the agenda. We've still got folks at public forum. We've still got the consent agenda for, for regular uh, government consent calendar. So uh, Rob, if you could weigh in and kind of tell everybody how that process will go, then we'll hear item 67 and take the 10 minute break and Commissioner Anders, you're recognized. Yeah, can we do 68 instead of 67? I think we got people holding on for that one. That's what I was wondering about 68. Okay, well, we can, we can move 68. Uh, I just was curious. I knew there might've been a, a, some discussion on that when I was trying to, uh, to get these pushed through. Yeah, we can definitely do 68 now. So Madam Clerk, uh, and for anybody who's watching this via CTV for zoning, it might run over a couple of minutes. If that's the case, we'll, we'll hear this one, then we'll come back to it. So go ahead and we'll hear item 68 now. So Madam Clerk, if you could go ahead and read that one in. What about and, uh, Mr. Link? Yeah, or yeah, Mr. Link, 
Tell us if I've stated everything correctly. We can come back to the original Zoom. It'll still be alive. We can come back into it. Once we've closed it, that link will still be valid. We'll go into do the zoning part of the meeting, close that one. That one will go away. Then we can come back to the still active regular commission Zoom room, if that is correct, Mr. Link. Very close. This meeting will end. Uh, Everybody will be the meeting will end. Uh, those that are waiting uh, to speak on uh, public forum, when we come back, um, can re-enter the waiting room. Uh, we will start the zoning meeting. When we come back from zoning into this commission meeting, the same link will work. So this meeting will end, but the same link will work uh, when we're done with zoning um, and we'll get back up and running on this link later. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted to hear and clarify. Is that clear for everybody? We good? All right, very good. Uh, so go ahead, uh, Madam Clerk, could you please uh, introduce item 68? Item 68 is ordinance 0 20 7 102. It's amending Knox County Code, Chapter 42, Article 2, Division 2, Section 42 58, entitled Competitive Tests, List of Eligibles, and Section 42 59, entitled Filling of Vacancies, to establish timeframes for administering employment candidate examination. This amends ordinance 0 90 9 111 adopted September 10th, 1990. This is on second reading. So moved. Thanks. Second. All right. So we've got a, a motion for approval from Commissioner Biggs and a second from Commissioner Carringer. Uh, you know, there was some discussion. Yes, Commissioner Jay. I'd like to make a substitute motion to defer this for 60 days. Um, I've spent a little bit more time in the last few weeks, reading over uh, information about the merit council, attending meetings, talking with our sheriff. And um, I just think, uh, I think that there's a lot of ideas on how the uh, merit council and the sheriff could work uh, better together and uh, optimize things. This hasn't been looked at in I don't know how long or if ever. And um, since it's a uh, function of commission, I think it's, uh, it would be important for a few commissioners to sit down with both sides and find uh, multiple improvements that might help instead of just bringing in piecemeal one at a time. And um, so that's the motion I put up for a substitute motion, please. Okay. All right. Does the uh, motion have a, does the substitute motion have a second? Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and make the second. So uh, any additional discussion on, on this item? Uh, Yes, Commissioner, I'm recognizing, and I'll go in order, Smith, Gill, and Anders. Okay, go ahead, Commissioner Smith, and then Carringer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, The sheriff told us at the last meeting that he is fine with this amendment, and and Commissioner Jay, I do understand that there are things that they can come together and work on, but I think there is no need to hold up this one before we do the whole, before we get into other changes that could be made. So I, I, I support going ahead and passing this one as the sheriff said he was okay with it and then exploring working with the merit council and the sheriff's department so that we can bring the rest of the changes all at one time. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Smith. And uh, moving over to uh, Commissioner Gill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just simply echo what uh, Commissioner Smith just stated. And also, I think if this is a procedural uh, component, is that um, uh, then an opportunity for commission to, to at that point, because it's procedural, to, to work with um, the Merit Council to have a representative from commission to, uh, as we do the reorganization, to sit on uh, and to develop that um, committee so that they can then seek to have representation from commission on the body. All right, thank you. And Commissioner Anders? Well, I think it was, I was pretty much what Commissioner Smith was gonna say. I think that there's room for work to be done and a committee to be formed out of the next commission, but I think this commission has this sitting here. And I think we should clean it up tonight. All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carringer. I agree. I mean, this is already the second reading of it. And as I said, he uh, agrees with this and the merit council was set up to represent the officers uh, to give them a um, support group. So, uh, and a word. So uh, uh, 
I didn't know the merit council. I think the merit council has always worked well with, well with the sheriff's office as far as I've ever known or heard. So I do think we need to go ahead with this tonight and move forward. Mr. Right. Chairman, Sheriff Spangler. Uh, yeah, the chair recognizes uh, Sheriff Spangler. Just let me clarify. I said I was okay with this, but it would be nice to be able to put this off just like with the other so that we can put, put together whatever we need to put together and make it work. Uh, there are some issues and it has nothing to do with the mayor council's uh, authority on discipline or anything like that. It's all administrative. And this has been since 1976 and there's not been any changes at all. Uh, so that's why we have asked for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's an ad hoc committee is what I'm asking for. Chair Spangler, I'm gonna restate what you just said, just so I make sure that everybody's hearing you what you're saying. Uh, what you're saying is to prepare maybe an ad hoc committee, maybe where you have a couple of commissioners, some folks from the Merit Council and some folks from your team to sit down and take a look at everything. Is that uh, what, you're, what you'd like to do or like to see happen one way, shape or form? That's exactly it, yes, sir. And uh, your preference would be to see uh, that happen first and then uh, bring this along with any other changes to a, a, a vote. So, uh, and once again, I'm gonna take Commissioner Jay's words and say to kind of, if we're gonna pass multiple things to make things better to do them all maybe in one whack once we've had a chance to review and, and look at all of these, is that sort of, uh, am I hearing everybody and restating everything for everybody correctly? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, there are any other commissioners that have a question or need to make a clarifying statement on this? Okay, all right, so the motion that is on the floor was a substitute motion to the original motion. Substitute motion was to defer this for 60 days, which would uh, have the a ad hoc committee as described by Commissioner Spangler to have a chance to uh, meet prior to uh, doing final passage on this item. Um, that is the, uh, I'm restating the motion on the floor. Okay, yes, Commissioner Smith. I, I just wanted to ask the sheriff what what his objection is to the, what the law department has told us is codifying the system that's currently in place. This is Chief, uh, Chief Mike Rubel, uh, 400 Main Avenue, Knox County, Tennessee. The problem with moving the physicals and the psychologicals to the uh, after hiring changes the entire dynamic of the testing itself. It becomes, it, instead of having a pre-employment test after a conditional offer of employment, it becomes a fitness for duty test and the entirety of what we can test for and what we can ask and what we can do becomes different. We ask a person to come in here and take a job with a sheriff's office, quit your current employment, turn down whatever applications that you have or other offers that you have, come to work for us. And then within 30 or 60 days, we give you a test and we may have to fire you because you don't meet our qualifications. It was a horrible system when we did it and we are trying to fix it. The, the, the concept of a conditional offer of employment is the new way that HR works when you have physicals and when you have psychological tests. To do it this way turns us backwards and puts us in a position where we are going to be absolutely non-competitive. What we are trying to do is make sure that we fix the system to make sure that the sheriff's office can be competitive. Yes. Okay, thank you. I've got a couple of commissioners have some questions. Commissioner Biggs, then Anders. Yeah, uh, Chief Rubble, why would we not do this when it was first reading two months ago instead of fourth quarter right at the last moment? We ask that there be an ad hoc committee and we, that's what we thought was gonna happen. And then we end up with a passage on first reading and it kind of surprised us. This is not the professional way that HR hires anymore. That's just not the way it's done. Okay, uh, Commissioner Biggs, follow up. All right, Commissioner Anders. Yeah, I, I went back and read the minutes from where the Marriott Council voted on this and no one from the Sheriff's Administration or the Sheriff's Office or anybody spoke against this. Um, and, and I think everybody agrees we need to have a committee to relook at this, but this is the way, this is codifying practice and it's saving money 
and it changes nothing. It just, uh, you know, that nobody objected day one when the merit council voted on it and they voted on it with no comment from anybody. Let, can I can I explain something? It does not codify practice. This is not the way it's working now. What we're what we've done now is we've established the conditional offer of employment, and then we give the psychologicals and the physicals. Correct. That's just, I, that I'm, 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 I'm I keep looking. Y'all can't see me, but I keep looking to my HR person, and that is how the system is working now. What the Merit System Council is trying to do is change the rules and take us backwards to where we hire. Then we have a fitness for duty test. If we if we have to fire somebody because they fail the fitness for duty test, we are walking right into an ADA challenge, an Americans with, uh, with Disabilities Act challenge. And we are asking somebody to come quit their original job, come to work for the sheriff's office, take a test in 30 or 60 days on the opportunity to get fired. Y'all need to think about that. We are already at a competitive disadvantage. If they fail the physical after we hire them, what's going to happen? They get fired. So what the system, and that's not the way the system works now, Commissioner Andrews, I'm sorry to tell you that that's not the way it works. We're giving conditional psychologicals and uh, conditional offer of employment, psychologicals and physicals, and then we make the, the, uh, the offer becomes final if they pass. That's the way it works now. And they're trying to take us backwards to the way it was done in the 70s, which is why these rules need to be adopted. These rules were written in the 70s. This rule was adopted in 1990. And, no. and also, I, why would you give somebody employment, conditional offer of employment, when you don't know they're psychologically fit to serve as a deputy or a corrections officer? You have to give them a conditional offer of employment under the ADA before you can ask the certain the questions that we have to ask. And Commissioner, I don't want to correct you. In 1990 is when the charter came into place and the original Merit System Council Act was brought forward into your charter. These rules were passed in 1977, brought forward verbatim into your charter. A follow up. Yeah, I, I could tell you, I remember when this came to first reading, I know that there was some discussion that night about we need to kind of get this done at first reading so that there could be some follow up and some research. Uh, I think and some folks looking into it, maybe even hearing from the sheriff on this. So uh, while it did pass quickly and seamlessly at first reading, I do recall some of the brief discussion that evening was really to kind of, we do need to get the process moving and it, this is something that most folks will be hearing from the, the merit council and the sheriff just over a few weeks after that before it came back. So uh, I can't remember if that was at, I, I recognize you, Commissioner Daly, uh, but, and I honestly, I can't remember if that was at the uh, work session or if that was at the, uh, the board of commissioners meeting when that discussion took place. But I know something to that effect did take place when this was ahead for first reading. Uh, go ahead, Commissioner Daly, and then Jay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the first reading we just passed because the sheriff was out of town. I made the same suggestion two times before to have a committee. Last, last week it was shot down. Nobody wanted to do a committee last week and all of a sudden now we want an ad hoc committee. It's a, uh, I agree with the ad hoc committee. Uh, we need comp, we need communications with the communications between the sheriff's department and the merit council and county commission I think we can work this out, but uh, I just don't understand why it's great today, but last week it was. Mr. Chairman, if I may, this is uh, Paula, the director of the mayor council. Uh, yes, you're uh, welcome. Okay, thank you. What we are asking is not to do physicals and psychologicals after hire. They will not be employed where they would have to be terminated. Yes, there was a time where we had unfortunately done the process that way. Uh, once they are selected by the sheriff's office, they are given a conditional offer of employment based on passing um, all of these exams, which would include a, a, PT exam, a PT exam, the physical and the psychological. We already do certain testing prior to that to be placed on the eligibility list. Um, they would just have that conditional offer up front and then this would follow. The sheriff's office, I do not believe if it wasn't cleared up this way, they would be doing the same process. They would make that offer and then do a physical and psychological. It would not be a final offer until those were administered either way. Okay, uh, Commissioner Schoonmaker, was that a question? Uh, I saw you wave your hand. Uh, I, I got it. You know, we're getting two, two different sides of the story. 
story here and, and we're supposed to make a decision this evening. I mean, this is uh, very interesting, I guess. Okay, uh, Commissioner Jay. Uh, in just following up on Commissioner Schoomaker's comment, that's an astute observation. And I think that's exactly why uh, I'm asking for a pause. Uh, this is, we're, we're talking about people's careers. We're talking about potential um, legal issues with ADA. We're talking about a, a very um, complicated system that I'm not sure most of us have a lot of knowledge on. Um, and I just, I do think it takes, a, it needs a little bit more time to, to get it right and to find, to, to make sure that we're on the same page. I, I agree. We, we've got two different groups that are essentially saying the other person's not deciphering it right. But at the end of the day, it's the commission that has the responsibility of, of establishing these rules and establishing this, uh, this merit council under resolution. And we should make sure that we take a little bit of time and get it right. Um, and not just pass it for the sake of passing it to, to then readjust things later. And that's simply, uh, that's exactly why I'm just asking for the pause. If, if we sit down and we can work things out and it's the same one, then fine. We pick up where we left off and, we, you know, we move forward. Um, but I think it's worth getting right for the, for the sake of our officers, think of the sake of the, the team on the Merit Council and the administration and our sheriff's office. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Jay. And, and I, as I recall, I know last week's work session did go very, very late. And I think there, there may have been some intentionality on the, the body, knowing that this would come up for more deep discussion this week. That may have been the uh, intent of the uh, body trying to read the room. Although, uh, anyway, that, that puts us there. Are there any other commissioners that have? Yeah, Commissioner Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I want to make sure I've got this HR question right in my head. Uh, someone is selected, they are given a conditional offer subject to passing the physical and psychological test, correct? That is correct. Hi, this is Lucetta Viles. I'm the HR director for the Knox County Sheriff's Office, 400 Main Street. That is correct. Then I don't understand why anybody would quit their job until they've passed that psychological and physical test. Well, they have to be hired by us. Well, it would, they would have to be hired by us. So right now, the way it goes is we make a conditional offer of employment and it's contingent upon them passing the PT test, physical, psychological, drug test and background check. Once they pass all of that, then we move on to a written offer of employment. So one would not be wise to quit their current job until they had met the conditions of the conditional offer. That is correct. Okay, yes, Commissioner Schoonmaker. How many uh, quit their jobs prior to being officially uh, installed as a Knox County Sheriff? They don't right now, but if we pass this, then that's what we're talking about. And let me just clarify. The terminology that's being used in these two ordinances is very confusing. And as you can see, there's right now two different ways of thought. So we're asking for this ad hoc committee so we can actually get all the terminology correct and do this properly so we don't have to keep coming back and forth. And I'm happy to share examples. Example one on, um, page two, paragraph one, line two, where it talks about a fit, physical fitness test or exam. That is talking about the actual PT test that only corrections and law enforcement or patrol take. On page three, talks about a physical examination. So again, the terminology is not correct and we need to make sure that everything is accurately uh, presented. Commissioner Biggs. Call for the question. All right, Commissioner Biggs calls for the question. Uh, when a question is called, uh, for those of you who may be watching, we actually have to vote first to actually vote for the question to be called, which uh, ends discussion. Then we move on to uh, the actual vote. So uh, all in favor of calling the questions, Madam Clerk, if you're voting yes, 
then you are voting that in agreement with Commissioner Biggs, you would like to see it debate or question cease and we'll proceed to voting on the resolution. If you're voting no, then you're saying you're voting to uh, continue questions or debate on this matter. Is that clear? Okay, all right, Madam Clerk, uh, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Beeler? Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly? Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay? Aye. Commissioner Jay votes aye. Commissioner Biggs? Yes. Commissioner Biggs votes aye. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Gill votes aye. Commissioner Carringer? Aye. Commissioner Carringer votes aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler? Aye. Commissioner Bussler votes aye. All members present voting aye. Okay, uh, the question has been called. We'll now proceed to the uh, vote on the uh, item that is before us. This is a substitute motion that was made by Commissioner Jay and seconded by Commissioner Nystrom. The uh, substitute motion was to uh, delay this by uh, two by 60 days in order to have the uh, resolution reviewed and through uh, establishment of a committee before any items are actually passed as I restated it earlier before the debate. Uh, that is the what is before us, Madam Clerk, if you could please lead a roll call vote. Commissioner Daly. Uh, let me be clear. I'm you're sorry. voting yes. You're voting yes for the substitute motion, not the original motion. Commissioner Daly. Aye. I didn't understand you. I'm sorry. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Commissioner Jay. Aye. Commissioner Jay votes aye. Commissioner Biggs. Nay. Commissioner Biggs votes no. Commissioner Gill. No. Commissioner Gill votes no. Commissioner Carringer? No. Commissioner Carringer votes no. Commissioner Smith? No. Commissioner Smith votes no. Commissioner Nystrom? Aye. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? No. Commissioner Anders votes no. Commissioner Bussler? No. Commissioner Bussler votes no. Commissioner Baylor? No. Commissioner Beeler votes no. Does anybody wish to change their vote? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you announce? Four aye votes, seven no votes. Okay, so the I substitute failed. motion does not pass. The uh, resolution that is now before us is the second reading of the uh, ordinance. So Madam Clerk, uh, that that's it, so we will need to, uh, that reverts back to the original motion. And Madam Clerk, if you could please state, uh, I cannot remember who made the original motion and second on the uh, the first one before the substitute. Commissioner, Commissioner Biggs. Biggs made the motion, seconded by Commissioner Carringer. Okay, so big, that's back to the original motion made by Biggs and Carringer. Yes. Okay, uh, Commissioner, we're back to there. If there's any discussion, yes, Commissioner Smith, you just raised your hand. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the I believe it's the law director helped work write this or was in consultation with the merit council. I would like to hear their opinion upon the uh, employment liability this may cause and if the wording is sufficient for legal defense. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Uh, what we worked with was what the merit council wanted and we didn't set that policy that was theirs. And we tried to get it into verbiage that the uh, merit council wanted. So that's, that's what we did without any respect for um, uh, the policy there. Now, the, the issue has been raised and properly so. If you have this all reversed and turned around, uh, there's always in this day and time room for a, a, an ADA lawsuit or a, a, a civil rights lawsuit with regard to unfair uh, hiring practices. Now, I can't give you the uh, specifics of what it would be. I just say, I think it's there. Uh, there's this, keep in mind that the uh, Merit Council ordinance as it is now was passed as a public act or private act by the legislature back in 76 or 77, somewhere in there, maybe 78. Uh, there was nothing on the books with the legislature at that time. So 
that's how it came. And then in 1990, uh, the um, charter uh, or the, the uh, commission adopted that as an ordinance, which you see there, 090 dash, whatever that number is in 1990, it was adopted without any further consultation or anything. Part of what I see with the dispute, if any, uh, between the merit council and the uh, uh, sheriff is, what is the purpose? You, you commission sets it. Commission can totally redraft the ordinance and the rules. It can let it go. It can modify it piecemeal like is before you right now. That's up to commission. Uh, you have total and complete authority over the uh, how that uh, board is uh, created and its uh, makeup and the rules under which it operates. Once, once you turn that over any item, such as discipline uh, that comes before the merit board, you have no control over that, but you have a control over the policy and, and the rules. Uh, so I, I, I'm not putting my imprimatur on this particular ordinance. I think that it, it's what the merit council wanted and that's what we did in representing the merit council. Okay, uh, hey, Commissioner Jay, you got a follow-up question? I, I, and then, our, I'm sorry, Commissioner Smith, you still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chief Rubel, if you could please try to explain in which way this policy is, 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 is not the policy you won't pass. Yes, sir. Uh, if, you'll, if you'll check section two of the ordinance, what I have in front of me as the ordinance, Section two, it's at the bottom of page two. You were told by the member of the merit council that they don't, that we're not going to hire, that there would be no reason for us to hire them. I want you to read the language they put in it. The sheriff shall appoint the person selected to the position. Appoint is legal jargon, legal jargon for hire. It doesn't mean select. Appoint is you are hired. Now read the rest of the sentence. The sheriff shall thereupon appoint the person selected to the position where the vacancy exists and shall notify the council of his action. The Merit System Council will, within 30 days thereafter, have performed psychological and physical examinations on those persons selected by the sheriff. You have made it a fitness for duty psychological and physical examination if you pass this ordinance. That is a different cycle, that is a different set of tests than a conditional offer of employment, which is the way professional HR does it every single day in this country right now. And I heard, I heard the end, we had a little technical snafu. I heard the end of what uh, Law Director Book was saying. I noticed he's saying that he's not talking about whether or not this is a good idea or a bad idea. This is what the Merit Council wants. I'm telling you, this is a bad idea. This is setting the county up for ADA lawsuits, like I mentioned before. The Merit System Council may either, either she either misrepresented to you what it did or she didn't understand that they are requiring us to hire these people thereafter give them the physical and psychological exam that may terminate their employment with us. That's what this ordinance does. That's what I've tried to get you to understand before. Uh, you know, so y'all, y'all just take a look at the language in front of you. The sheriff shall appoint thereafter the council will do a psychological and physical. That's a problem. That is a legal and practical problem. Uh, Commissioner Smith, I can't hear you. Yet. I can't like either. So if that if, if this was amended and the word appointed was changed to select, would that solve the problem? We're, we're back to trying to make changes within. I, I don't know where the appropriate place would be for them to select. It needs to go to a committee to make these changes all at once rather than piece it together. I'm sorry, that's what that was the motion we made and it failed. I understand that. But we have got a problem with this language and you are going to create a landmine for the sheriff's office to step on. And the mayor council is not going to be the one that steps on it. We're the ones that are going to have to fire somebody. They're going to sue us saying we gave them an improper psychological or physical test. And we're going to spend a heck of a lot more $90,000 defending one of these ADA lawsuits. That's my issue. That's always been my issue. I hate to be the technical guy up here arguing no, but this is a very technical legal argument. I don't know if David, I'm sorry, I don't know if Law Director Book has looked into it or not, but this is a huge problem. And forget about the legality for a minute. Let's go back to what I said before. I can tell I was very unpersuasive with you all before. 
but you're asking a man to quit his job, accept a man or a woman to quit their job, accept an appointment with the sheriff's office on the opportunity to thereafter have to take a test that's going to get him fired. That's so, what we're doing. Can, can I ask you? Yes, you can. Sorry. This, this please, sir. You, you don't have a problem with the process of um, you select your person, they get a conditional employment, and then they pass, have to pass their psychological and physical test, correct? The phrase that you're, yes, the phrase you're looking for is a conditional offer of employment. That's the way the sheriff's, oper, uh, sheriff's office operates right now. Okay. It's not an appointment. It is a conditional right. offer. Right. You, you don't have a problem with that process. So in, in other words, the biggest problem that you have with this is the way you think it's worded is going to lead to lawsuits. Uh, the way that it is worded creates legal issues and very definite practical issues with regard to trying to hire somebody and then test them and fire them later. That, that's, that's my problem. You got two different issues. The condition, if your question, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Smith, is do we agree with a conditional offer of employment system? The answer is yes, we've adopted it. We're, we're good with it. I don't know if it can fit there because the way they've pulled it out, they've pulled out chapter 42, section uh, 4259. And I don't know if the conditional offer, <laughs> they tell me I'm yelling, sorry. Uh, the conditional okay. offer is, um, um, may not fit in that particular location at, at 59. Okay. All right, I'll thank you. Microphone down. I tend to get loud, I apologize. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think there was another commissioner. All right, I'll go Schoomaker, excuse me, John uh, Larson had raised his hand earlier. Uh, so uh, and, and I will go uh, Commissioner Jay, then Schoomaker, then Daly. I, I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to clarify, currently as the Sheriff's Department is operating now, I just, we may have been repeating this, but I want to be really clear. We say, officer, we would like for you to work for the Sheriff's Office we give them a conditional offer, then we test the four or five different tests. And then if the officer passes all of those tests to satisfaction, then they are hired. Is that correct? Yes, tests and background, a very extensive background investigation. Ms. Avila is also wants to answer that. Okay, and is is that, are you from the a representative from the Merit Council, are you in agreement that that is how it's currently being done? Uh, just to clarify what you said, that they are given the conditional offer upon passing all of those exams, and then they're made the final offer, yes. Right, so conditional offer, test, 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 final offer, they're hired. Correct. That's how it works now. Okay, the proposal that we have in front of us would change this to hiring them first, then test, 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 and if they fail, that they might have to be fired. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Is that is not how it's intended, but if that is how they're stating that the it's legally written, um, that is not how it was intended or how the law director's office was supposed to write that up. That is not how the council okay. voted. Then to me, thank you for that. Th this is the clarification of exactly why I said, take a breath, take a pause, Let's take, let's make sure this is right instead of just passing it. So we've gone through that. We voted against taking a pause. I would really recommend everybody vote against this to stop and get it right and take a, and make sure we do this instead of just doing it for the sake of the fact that it's on a second reading and we're trying to move forward. Because if it's not right and we get sued or if it's not in the right order, if it's written wrong, this is a legal document that we now have to back up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jay. Uh, we've got Schoonmaker, then Daly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm not in favor of supporting an ordinance if this could potentially lead, lead to lawsuits that affect Knox County. Um, if the paperwork is not right, we should not be voting this in. Let's wait until it is perfect before we pass an ordinance that affects Knox County. Thanks. All right, Commissioner Daly. Yeah, I agree with Commissioner Jay. We should have waited, but that's beside the point. Uh, I want to make sure that the Merit System Council has their fair speak. You all have anything else to say? 
I'm sorry. Uh, no. All right. Thank you. All right. Is there uh, any other questions or clarifying comments on this one? I mean, uh, on this one, you know, my concern is really, you know, are, are we, you know, is this right right now? I'll also say we've had a lot on our agenda the last month or two, and this conversation that we've had should have taken last week or when it was at first reading, maybe, maybe not. It had to happen at least once before we pass it. So I'm, I'm glad that, that we're here. Um, I'm recognizing, I see Commissioner Anders, then Commissioner Smith. So uh, go ahead, Commissioner Anders first. Yeah, I think this is a um, an example where I mean this this occurred through merit council over multiple meetings and nothing was said. We had a meeting last month and nothing was said. This is a terrible way to conduct business to make things better. Uh, if nobody said a word to any of the you know most of the commissioners haven't spoken to anything other than what we've read and what we've been told and this shouldn't have got to this point. This should have been clarified and fixed months ago uh, during, I mean, the merit count, the sheriff has lawyers on duty on staff. The law department knew because they wrote it and nobody found the flaw in it until 15 minutes before the meeting starts. I think it's a terrible way to do business. And I think uh, if the committee gets together and moves forward, it's got to do better. Thanks, Commissioner Anders. Commissioner Smith. Um, yes, I voted for uh, uh, against the last one because I wanted to get back to the discussion of what was the flaw in this. And uh, I do find it hard to phantom that with lawyers on both sides that somehow language has got through that could subject us to any future to future lawsuits. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Carringer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I am very disappointed to say, um, as Commissioner Anders said last month, uh, when this went through first reading, uh, you know, we had workshop and we had a meeting and there were representatives there from the sheriff's office. In fact, the HR director was there. They never ever came down, ever said anything, nothing. Also, um, last week, um, it was said about how anything was worded. The, merits the Merit Council and the members of the Merit Council, I have 110% support of them that all they want to do is represent the men and women who are our officers that are out there protecting us every day. That is who the Merit Council represents. They don't work for the sheriff or the administration. They represent the men and women that are out there as a backup because, and the reason this was all started was so that whenever sheriff, whenever a new sheriff came in or whenever administrations change and say they didn't get along with somebody's personality, they couldn't just fire that man or woman that's out there wearing the blue. The Merit Council, backs up the men and women. And, and now more than ever, these men and women out there need to know that they have a backup. And I wanna tell you, I ask, because I'd heard the rumors that our merit council, they may be trying to get rid of it. And those rumors have been circulating. And I've done a lot of door to door and I've asked some officers, the county and the city and all, what they thought about if there was, a, the merit council getting rid of in you know the sheriff's office and they're not for that because that is their backup so uh you know no one has called or or tried to uh get a hold of me um if this was such a big deal i don't understand it because i know the merit council i know the people on that committee have worked very hard and met to make sure it was being done right and that it was saving Knox County taxpayers money. And so I, I, there's just something not right about this. And that's very disturbing. And I, I hate to, you know, feel this way, uh, but it's been, it's, it's been put out there. And, and so why this wasn't caught 
and why it's just now being brought about. And it's a shame that we're having to do a Zoom meeting because I don't feel you get the uh, the the input probably uh, in the best way than when we're meeting there uh, in the assembly room. So I don't know what's going on, but it just seems very strange to me that all of a sudden this has popped up uh, out of nowhere that we're being told this. I, I feel like there was plenty of opportunities for this to have been addressed. So I'm very disappointed and now I don't know, you know, it's kind of hard to know what to think. All right, uh, Mr. Law Director, there were another substitute motion that was different uh, substantially from the original substitute motion. Is that something that we could hear according to Roberts? Yeah, you could make another substitute motion. Well, what I might propose is to make a substitute motion to defer this for one month, keep it as is, and encourage that committee to get together for at least their first meeting. Then the September commission meeting, they can make the decision to act on this as is, or if they want to uh, make any changes or uh, you know approve it at that time. I think that would also, what I would direct the uh, Sheriff's Department to do and Chief, Chief Rubel, uh, Sheriff Spangler, is to uh, meet with each county commissioner. We've got a new group coming in just to let them know what's going on. I mean, if, if there's truly some concerns about this, that that, that seems like something that, that could, be, could be done. Uh, go ahead, Michelle, Commissioner Carringer. As, so do we need to defer this for 30 days or can we just not uh, put in the right verbiage there as what um, the, the merit system thought they were getting put out there? I mean, is that not something we can? Well, what I might, and I'll, I'll look to the uh, lot up to your, your question uh, and I'll look for clarification from uh, uh, Mr. Booth. We got if you made uh, significant changes into the ordinance here at second reading, if it changes it, then that sets it back to first reading. So That's if correct. you're going to do that, then you might as well, you know, put it off a month to really have a little bit more time to intentionally study it, in my opinion. So uh, yes, uh, David. You are correct, Mr. Chairman, that if there's any change at the substance of it, then that becomes a first reading and then you have to have another second reading. And what, what I hear saying is, in my opinion, without reading it, but substituting that language is flipping that ordinance. And that would, in my opinion, uh, verge right on being a substantive change, which would create, if you put that, if somebody makes a motion to amend it that way, that would then create a first reading and you go on to a second reading later. Okay. I'll make a substitute motion from the chair to uh, postpone this for one month. You know, keep the language as is. And uh, I recognize Commissioner Schoonmaker with the second on this. So that way uh, for the Merit Council, the language will stay the same. It will uh, give them a chance at the next meeting it, it, to vote it in as is, but it will also give the, uh, the Sheriff's Department's attorneys to uh, convene with uh, our new law director as well as all the county commissioners. It, it sounds like everybody wants about the same thing, but there could be some words in this that uh, need to be tweaked a little bit. And by, uh, rather than voting it down, merely putting it off one month, that still gives the opportunity to do a complete second reading if this is deemed to be the way that uh, we want it to go. So uh, that's my substitute motion. And uh, Commissioner Schoonmaker, I recognize with the second. Mr. Chairman, Sheriff uh, Spangler, may I say something real quick? Yeah, go ahead, you're recognized. I, I just want to clarify, as I said earlier, there is no way, and let me repeat, no way that I would want to do away with the merit council. So however that rumor got started, I don't know. I don't care. But what really bothered me is the fact that all we're trying to do is change a, a administrative issue. It has nothing to do because I'm the first one to support making sure we have the merit council for the protection of the employees. It is there for the employees to keep me and any other sheriff from doing anything arbitrarily to those individuals. And I think that's important to make sure that stays in contact. So with that being said, I will shut up. Okay. All right, uh, there is a substitute motion on the floor. Is there any other questions or qu clarifications on that one? Okay, all right, Madam, uh, yes, Commissioner Smith. Uh, all right, I recognize Smith and Bustler. Uh, Randy, you raised your hand. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it seems to me everybody's in agreements where we want to go with this. It's a matter of language. Uh, I do believe that there needs to be this committee formed to look at other areas of the uh, merit council policy that might be, I guess the word would be antiquated and, and out of time. But I don't think we should tie this one issue to the other changes that need to happen or, or, or that need to be looked at. Uh, if we form an ad hoc committee, which I'm in favor of, uh, that could take months. If this, is this something that we need to get in place? Would a better motion maybe be to have the merit council, the sheriff's department and the law department sit down and get this language right? Because it seems like we're all trying to go to the same place with this particular change. Okay, let me as the maker of the motion, I'll uh, restate with that in what you just said. So uh, the, the gist of my motion was to defer it for one month with the reference to a committee. Uh, I can amend my substitute motion to say uh, defer for one month with the uh, specific, being specific that before the work session, the Merit Council Law Department and the uh, you know, HR Legal Council for the Sheriff's Department will sit to meet and go over the language. Is that, uh, did that capture the gist of what you're saying there, Commissioner Smith? Yes, it does. And then, then I think we formed the committee to look at the other parts of the policy that may need to be tweaked. Okay. So uh, I want to restate my motion, uh, if it's okay with the second, uh, will they be my, my substitute motion will be to defer this for one month where no language will be changed uh, in, in this motion. The intent of the motion will be though to have the uh, Merit Council the Knox County Law Director and the Sheriff's Department to uh, come together for one meeting. Uh, the meeting will be publicly noticed, so members of commission will be invited. And uh, we will uh, we'll go from there. Uh, is that clear, uh, Commissioner Schoonmaker, you had the second? The second concurs. Okay, all right. I think that's about where we are. Mr. Chairman, right. I wanna make sure that in your motion that the three sit down, the three entities sit down and and come back to us with language that does achieve what it appears everybody is trying to achieve. Yeah. Okay, all right, uh, so amended. Uh, yes, and Commissioner Bussler. Uh, do you not see the hands raised? Sorry, oh, sorry, I, 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 I apologies, Charlie. Yeah, all right, yes, you're recognized. You made a statement about your motion that said you would sit down and, and work with these people on this, um, Motion. Well, we'll be me, but, yeah. After this meeting, you will not be there. <laughs> and you won't be the one that will be handling this. So um, we need to get back to where we get what we need here for the sheriff and the way he hires and make sure the merit council gives it to us, gives their side of it, and we have this committee. I would like to make a, a substitute motion that we have no... Uh, action on this item until we get the ad hoc committee and all we need to get back to us to where we can vote on it as one, well, like the, uh, the sheriff said, get it all together at one time and that's what he was trying to do. So if you're going to make a motion, let's make a motion that we set a committee up till we get this thing done properly. Point of order, you can't have a substitute motion on top of a substitute motion. Oh, what? Okay, uh, Mr. Law Director, could you please clarify the uh, double substitution question? Commissioner Anders is right. You've got to vote on the substitute motion. You can't have a substitute on a substitute. All right, so the, uh, thank you. The substitute motion that is before us, uh, we've stated it clearly. Uh, and to be clear, I'm not gonna be the one convening it. Yes, back to you, Commissioner Bussler. Okay, it, did we make enough difference in this motion to be different from the motion that's on the agenda or this substitute motion away from what we had before? The so uh, one month, yeah. two months, or sixty days down to one month. It's not a su it's not substantial enough to to as a motion. I don't think, Mr. Law Director, is that correct? 
Not a, I, I'm not sure I understand the question, Commissioner. Say it again. The question is to make the motion that we had to go back to close to what Ms. Uh, Commissioner Jay wanted, it has to be substantially changed. Changing it by just 30 days, does that make it sub substantial enough to where you can re-enter that by Robert's Rules of Order? No, that you're talking about two things procedurally. The substantive change is a change in wording, which changes the substance of the ordinance, not not the procedural thing. That uh, to go 30 days is not a change of the substance of the ordinance. Does that answer your? Yes, I, that, thank you. I think what Commissioner Bussers, if I might restate, his question was: We had a follow-up motion that was a. Can you bring to? It's almost like it's almost a zoning question where you can't bring something back and was a motion that was brought forward uh, with a difference of 30 days. And it was that different than the motion that did not pass earlier. Uh, as chair, it's my ruling that uh, it is because it's a different of a month. And if a vote needs to take place to, uh, to challenge my ruling, so be it. But I would like to uh, bring this motion forward, which is simply to not make a change to it right now, to have a one month delay and to have the three entities have one meeting to begin to, to bring us their recommendation starting probably next week. Uh, and that is the motion that is currently before us. Okay, uh, all, the, all right, that's the motion. Madam Clerk, would you please begin a roll call vote? Yes. Commissioner Jay. Can't hear you. Aye. Commissioner Jay bolts aye. Commissioner Biggs. Can you restate the motion, please? Uh, the motion is to uh, defer this for one month to the September agenda with no changes to the wording in the ordinance. The only reason for deferral is a direction to the uh, Merit Council, the law director, and the Sheriff's Council slash HR to come together for one meeting to review the language. If they find a better version of language, then they can bring that recommended on this specific item to us at the September meeting. That would allow us to get this closed, to move forward, and then allow that committee to be formed by your, the next body to take a longer term look at any things that might need to change. So at that point in time, will that be the second reading or will we have to vert back to the first reading and go through this process again? Uh, if they so if they rate, make a recommendation for sizable changes, then you had to go back to the first reading. No. Commissioner Biggs votes no. Commissioner Gill? No. Commissioner Gill votes no. Commissioner Carringer? No. Commissioner Carringer votes no. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Smith votes aye. Commissioner Nystrom? Yes. Commissioner Nystrom votes aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker? Aye. Commissioner Schoonmaker votes aye. Commissioner Anders? Aye. Commissioner Anders votes aye. Commissioner Bussler? No. Commissioner Bussler votes no. Commissioner Beeler? Aye. Commissioner Beeler votes aye. Commissioner Daly? Aye. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Commissioner Daly. Aye. Commissioner Daly votes aye. Have we gone through everybody? Yes, we have. And okay. we have seven I votes and four no votes. Okay, it passes. Okay, we will, uh, that brings us to the end of this part. We're gonna take a 10 minute recess. Uh, if you guys, Rob, if you could please let everybody who's waiting for zoning know that we'll be uh, reconvening with zoning in about 10 minutes. All right, thank you everybody.